All right, on with it. Welcome to the Radical Agenda. It's a show about common sense extremism, where we talk about radical, crazy, off-the-wall things like the fucking IT industry. Yes, this agenda is quite radical, and welcome to it, this 100th episode of the program. Does that make it like the centennial or something? No, no, that would mean that we had been doing this for a hundred years. And while it may feel that way at times, we do this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and we are just getting started. Today is February 8th, 2016. It's a Monday, and we are coming to you live from my sorry excuse for a studio in Keene, New Hampshire, where I have on hold and will momentarily introduce Mr. Medeker. Uh, he's a popular YouTube personality, formerly known as the Internet Aristocrat, who has made a name for himself uh, articulately calling out the batshit lunacy of social justice warriors, and I'm really looking forward to talking to him. But first, I'd just like to start off by saying fuck Dale Carnegie and the millions of people who have read How to Win Friends and influence people. Uh, in case you're new to the program, I sort of spend my days reading up on current events, and at night before bed, I read books, and when I'm walking or otherwise exercising, I listen to audiobooks. <clears throat> uh, and I'm trying to constantly sort of like broaden my horizons to bring you an informative and entertaining program. Uh, but... Hang on a second. Lost my fucking place. <laughs> now, I, and, and I had gone into like a study of economics and history and genetics. And in the process, I really alienated a lot of fucking people. So I figured like how to win friends and influence people would be a good course of study to follow up with before I find myself completely alone and ruin your social life in the process. But this book, it's like the perfect example of everything I hate in the world. It's just a manual on how to avoid conflict and not hurt other people's feelings. And yeah, that might make you more popular than you are today. Certainly, if I said to the world, I want everything to be peaceful and women are so strong and wise and blacks are being horribly oppressed by that awful white cis patriarchy, I'd be more popular than when I come on here to talk to you about gender dimorphism and racial IQ disparities. No question about it, if you go out into the world and try to hold hands with the fucking downtrodden masses and sing kumbaya with the other kin fucking fanatics, you will have more friends. But you will influence exactly nothing. In fact, you will have been influenced yourself. At some point, folks, conflict becomes the only virtuous path. People are starting to realize that, and this is why Donald Trump is leading the GOP. It becomes the only way to get anything done, and friends or no friends, you can't influence terrible, reality-detached, dishonest people without visiting some negative fucking consequences upon them. You know, treating them like shit is the kindest thing you can possibly do, because eventually the alternative is helicopters in the right-wing death squads. And that might not be for you. We've had people call into the show and say they lost their jobs, girlfriends, or other relationships for sharing this program or for discussing some unpopular topic. I don't want that to happen to you. So if you, you know, if you need to keep your mouth shut, maybe, uh, you know, help somebody like me out who doesn't have to at ChristopherCantwell.com slash donate. You know, we had Ian Freeman from Free Talk Live on the program Friday, right? And Free Talk Live is a nationally syndicated broadcast radio show that I used to be a co-host of until I got branded a racist and fired, as a lot of you already know. But Ian and I are still friends, so, you know, he came into the studio on Friday, and a lot of people complained about it, even though I told you on episode 98 that portions of it would be like nails on a fucking chalkboard. Ian's one of these reality-denying autistic libertarians who refuses to accept the world for what it is, and he will do these insane logical backflips to justify his egalitarian narrative. And that's what happens when your method of influencing people involves trying to make everyone happy and appeal to as broad an audience as possible. That's what happens when you're in the ad sales business. Now, we don't do that here. We don't kiss no fucking asses. We thrive on conflict and confrontation, and we can only do it with the support of you, the listener, at ChristopherCantwell.com slash donate. Uh, so without further ado, let me bring Jim on the line here. Jim, welcome to the Radical Agenda. Thanks for being on the program today. Oh, thanks for having me on. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, I, I, I had first stumbled across your work when a, a channel called Atheism is, Atheism is Unstoppable had re-uploaded a video titled Internet Aristocrat Explains SJWs, and I had subscribed to that channel, and I commented on it. I said, you're my hero. Subscribed. And a bunch of people explained to me that the proprietor of that channel was not the original creator. They directed me to you, and I've become a, a huge fucking fan since, so it's a, it's a real honor to, uh, to have you on the program today. So w welcome to it. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad you like the video. A lot of my stuff is mirrored on multiple different accounts, so it's not uncommon for somebody to, to stumble on something that's older and then 
to think that's uh, the channel that it's on and then wonder why nothing else is getting released. Yeah, exactly. But uh, when I when I did found it, one of, one of the one of the things you did recently uh, that I really enjoyed, you had um, uh, Dean Esme from uh, A Voice for Men on. And your your video description contained the words uh, something to the effect of caution. This video contains rape, and <laughs> and I thought it was a really accurate description because it, you 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 took this guy to the fucking cleaners. Well, yeah, I didn't know who uh, Dean M or Esme was. I, I was talking about um, there was a reporter from Forbes, uh, an economist there, that was talking about the events in Cologne, and they were putting forward this ridiculous notion that the rapes that took place weren't actually by refugees. They weren't by anybody from uh, the Middle East or from North Africa. That they were, in fact, neo-Nazis. They were secretly disguised as Arabs in an attempt to make people want refugees to leave, which is the most insane thing I've ever heard. And so I was arguing with this woman, and all of a sudden Dean Esme shows up and starts screaming at me that I am a, a racist bigot, that I lead lynch mobs, that I get <laughs> uh, homosexuals thrown off of rooftops in the Middle East, the, the typical kind of shit I'm used to. Um, and it just kind of escalated from there, and I eventually brought him on. And within the first few minutes, you know, you know, I expected a debate. I expected him to show up and argue with me because he said I was wrong about everything. But within the first two or three minutes, it was, you're right, Jim, you're right, Jim, you're right, Jim, you're right, yeah. Jim. Uh, yeah. Until finally I said something that did, you know, get him upset, and it devolved from there. Um, but it, it, he talked so much shit on Twitter, and I was expecting him to bring his A game, and when he showed up, it... It just fell he apart. Doesn't, and he doesn't have out. a fucking A-game. He doesn't have one. And uh, it's, <laughs> it's funny to me because I used to be a contributor at A Voice for Men, was why I, I thought it was so fantastic. And Esme actually had come after me, right? So I uh, I was writing at A Voice for Men. I thought, I, I you know, uh, both of us, not a big fan of the feminist fucking whack jobs out there, of course. And so I figured that uh, Voice for Men would be a good place for me to be writing. And I, I at some point, uh, uh, lumped feminists in with the, with the left wing of politics. And Esme, of course, jumped down my fucking throat like I was taking a, you know, like, we're nonpartisan here, and they, like, kicked me off the blog, and, uh, and of course, they, they went and found other excuses later on, but that was the, the initial reason for doing it, and so... So, uh, do, you, do you know, uh, like, uh, in regards to Esme, because, like I said, I had no knowledge of who he was before um, our debate, during our debate, afterwards, I found out. Is he kind of like, I mean, is he and the people like him, are they kind of like Atheism Plus? Did they show up to talk about, you know, men's rights and stuff like that, and then start injecting this kind of left-leaning ideology of let's just be nice to everybody, let's not say mean things, that kind of shit. I I don't I don't know when or how it started, but they certainly have sort of become, uh, if you will, feminism for men or bearded feminism. But I repeat myself, uh, and and so they uh, they they definitely became like this egalitarian sort of hey, we want to play a victim narrative for for the males, and I think that it sort of does figure into the uh, the atheism plus thing, which is something that you had mentioned in the. Uh, um, the uh, Internet Aristocrat Explains SJW's thing, too, which I thought was fantastic. They uh, they started adding to it, right? It's it's no longer about false rape accusations. It's no longer about, you know, tr you know w why gender roles work out the way they do. It becomes this whole egalitarian narrative where we're all supposed to be the fucking same. And uh, and and it just it, it just gets completely fucking out of control. And I've warned Paul. Uh, Paul Elam is the original proprietor of A Voice for Men, and then uh, Esme is one of his editors or whatever the fuck his role is over there. Um, and he's just been further and further getting involved with these, you know, with these left-wing lunatics. And I'm like, you know, you are going to fall down the same exact path as, like, everything else. We've talked on here before about um, Robert Conquest's Three Rules of Politics. And the second rule is anything that is not uh, explicitly and, and constitutionally right-wing will eventually become left-wing. And it appears to me that's what's happening over at uh, ABFM. Right. I've noticed that kind of a trend where an organization starts with a uh, set goal that's very well defined, but it attracts in new people that end up kind of skewing it. And then really what you end up with is something that mirrors what they were originally fighting, which kind of you saw take place with athe or Atheism Plus, just different kind of groups. Um, so I didn't know if that's kind of what he was. Again, I know very little about him other than that he is terrible at debating. That's the only thing I can say <laughs> about Dean Esme is he is horrible at it. Right. Yeah. He he I, I listened to the the thing when he came on your show. And I mean, uh, you know, D, Dean can do a little writing. Right. But, I, you know, it doesn't seem to me that he's he's good at the quick off the cuff things as as you certainly uh, as you certainly were. And it was it was a, it was a blast to listen to. What was the what was the name of that video? If people want to go look at it on uh, your channel there. Uh, of the Esme debate. Yeah, uh, it should be up as Meadowcast. Um, it should be Dean Esme. 
uh, immigrant hero or something like that. <laughs> they'll, they'll fight it. It's the only one like that. The the immigration thing, yeah, because all right, so it came into it because of this this you know immigration debate, and of course you know Dean has a has a simultaneous interest, right? So he's he's a left leaning guy, uh, you know, big on the uh, you know the multiculturalism is just fantastic. All this diversity is going to make us swell. Uh, and I do not, I do not agree with that position in the slightest, but again, like I am sort of sympathetic to the whole, you know, false rape allegation thing. Uh, I've been through that. I've got an article up on my website explaining, you know, I had a, a situation where some girl gave me a head and decided to call the fucking cops afterwards. And only, and only by mere virtue of her admitting that she was lying, am I not in prison right now? So I'm sympathetic to it all. Like, look, yes, of course, people accuse people of rape and a lot of times it's a lie. But when you have like hundreds and hundreds of, <laughs> hundreds of victims and all of these witnesses and, and, and uh, literally a word in the language to describe exactly what they did, they, they called it Tahara or something like that it, it's it's one of these uh uh, uh it, 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 the narrative begins to fall apart right he's trying to tie in his sort of like oh well men are always victims narrative with the whole i love multiculturalism narrative and it did not seem to last for very long at all right and i think that's uh, the stumbling block that he that he hit on when we're talking about the events in cologne uh, we're talking about events that were witnessed by hundreds if not thousands of people that there are, uh, you know, multiple witness accounts. Uh, there was the, God, I think he was a MMA fighter or something, uh, Ivan, I can't remember his full name, did an interview talking about it. He was a bouncer at an event that was near the area. He talked about how he had countless women coming up to him saying, can I just stand next to you? Because they keep uh, assaulting us, they keep groping us, they won't leave us alone. Um, you had a lot of those kind of stories. And I think the, the last count that I saw was they had around 900 filed reports from Cologne alone. Uh, with multiple other reports coming in from just different areas where there was the same kind of thing happening. And this is right on top of the news that you get out of countries like Sweden, where they basically admitted that for the past five years they were suppressing news about migrant crime. Uh, you know, people already knew about white pic or pixelization in Sweden, where they would uh, digitally alter suspect photos so that you couldn't guess the race or their eth or ethnicity or where they were from. So it's it just, it's a very bizarre mindset. I mean, you even had uh, Angela Merkel's, um, God, I think it was the interior minister from 2013, come out and say that there most definitely was a cover-up. You had uh, German media say that they failed to report. And it was a five-day gap. So it, it was a very surreal event to see where you had all these people basically saying, this happened. We have all this evidence this happened. We have all these eyewitness accounts that this happened. And nobody wants to report it. And the government doesn't want to do anything. Right, and like so, if it was some feminist anti-male agenda, you know that the media would be all fucking over it. Meanwhile, they're actually trying to sweep it under the rug because it conflicts with some other egalitarian narrative. Right, I, I guess when you uh, look at the progressive stack, uh, you know, we, we have a new top-tier contender. So now, now we've got uh, immigrants from the Middle East and North Africa are now at the top of the progressive stack, and white women that usually were at the top are now, I don't know, third or fourth tier, I, I guess is what that means. <laughs> Yeah, it, the uh, the progressive stack, the you know the the oppression Olympics, if you will, and and if you uh, and all of a sudden they're like, well, you know, look, uh, ladies, we like you and all of it, and we don't, we're 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 trying to condemn the whole rape thing, but right now we're just sort of trying to convert Europe to Islam, and uh, your rape is a, a worthwhile consequence of that. Sorry. Yeah, you're just gonna you're gonna have to live with it. This is what the uh, cost of progress is. Welcome to the new multicultural uh, <laughs> multicultural uh, world. Diversity, yes, ladies, say it with me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, and it's and it's an interesting thing to me. I mean, I come at things from a pretty libertarian perspective, and I and I had always been um, a, I I favor open borders for a long time. When Donald Trump started rising in the polls here in the States, I, I first looked at it like, what the fuck is wrong with everybody? This guy's going to build a wall that's going to be used to keep us in. It'll be the largest mass grave in front of the, the largest tombstone of the largest mass grave in the history of the United States. You're crazy. And after I started to see what was going on in Europe, I was like, Jesus Christ, you cannot have this, you know, unmitigated uh, open borders immigration while you have welfare states and labor regulations and anti-discrimination laws and all of this crap. It scared the living shit out of me. And I guess it sort of culminated all, you know, with this massive thing that happened in Cologne and elsewhere on New Year's Eve. Right. I, I think um, one of the things with Trump was his gambit of, you know, we want to uh, re or take another look at immigration, we want to come up with a solution that's different, you know, Trump's wall. Yeah. Uh, and then, then you had events like Cologne take place, then you had events like San Bernardino take place, and people suddenly said, holy shit, maybe he's not completely insane. Uh, 
You know what I mean? It, it started getting a conversation going about it. Uh, one of the interesting things I, I think is, uh, you know, I'm from Minnesota. And in Minnesota, we have uh, our governor is one of the only few left, really, that wants to bring in Syrian refugees. And this is after, you know, uh, the events that have been taking place all over the place. You know, you had, I mean, my God, Paris, every, everything like that. Yeah. And um, it, it, I think it's gotten a conversation started about maybe we really do need to take a look at not just the normal migration, you know, from Mexico to the U.S. and back, but just internationally. What, what are we doing? What kind of mechanisms do we have in place? Then you had reports coming out from different intelligence uh, agencies saying they had tools in place to make sure that things were secure, but they're not allowed to use it because administration and the people above them are afraid that that will look bad. So you're, you're telling me that we've given the government all this ridiculous power, that they can go through my email, they can wiretap my phone, they can do anything they want to surveil me. But when they actually have these tools and they have somebody they should be looking at, they don't want to do it because that wouldn't be politically correct. Are you kidding me? Yeah. On the, after the San Bernardino thing, they said one of his neighbors was thinking about trying to alert authorities, but he was afraid he was going to get branded a fucking racist if he did. And this has sort of been my thing here. I mean, I've, I've alienated a lot of people. A lot of people have gotten real upset for me. I've lost, you know, radio jobs and speaking gigs and all types of shit because I'm getting branded a racist. But I'm like, look, at some point, somebody's got to fucking deal with this and say, no, you know, there are there are there are things going on in the world. And as you bring up, I mean, we've got we've got this ridiculous surveillance apparatus in the United States. They're, they're flying fucking spy planes over to home, tapping phones, reading emails and whatnot. And they're doing all of this in the name of national security. But they're willing to let anybody in uh and one of the things i went into recently was a study um you ever heard of a thing called rk selection theory uh no i don't believe i'm familiar i with would it. i would encourage you to check this out and i'll i'll send you the ebook if you feel like reading it very very fascinating thing but what he what he goes into he's got this idea that um uh, people uh, have different reproductive strategies, and that sort of leads to our um, our political philosophies, okay? And if you think of, like, uh, 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 wolves, wolves are what they would call K-selective, that they're monogamous and they raise fewer children, they invest a lot into them. And then rabbits, for example, are, uh, you know, they just fuck and create as many offspring as possible, and that's how they sort of hope to pass their DNA off. And he, he equates this to, like, wolves as conservatives and, and rabbits as liberals, and I might be doing a very poor job of explaining this in a brief period of time i'm sorry but what he's what he's explaining is that the, that the left sort of wants to create um an environment that is conducive to their rabbit-like nature where uh, predation is random where it has nothing to do with your ability to defend yourself where it has nothing to do with your physical fitness or your your ability to your willingness to fight but rather that it's random so they disarm the populace and import people who are going to uh create all manner of conflict and whether or not it's uh, the, the the whether or not it's the fucking rabbit people trying to destroy us or not, it seems to me as if there's there's people who want to create conflict. So is this called the Easter Bunny hypothesis? Are we <laughs> well, the so they outbreed us. It's kind of like idiocracy, right? We're going to reach a point where the dumb people have bred so much we're all screwed. <laughs> Well, that's that's sort of where it's uh, where it's kind of heading now. You know, the thing is that you wouldn't have I don't think you've had this problem if it wasn't for the economic incentives. Right. So they want to have like, uh, you know, you think of like rabbits in a field of clover. They don't have any concept of property. Right. They just go out and eat fucking grass. And, you know, wolves are like, we'll defend territory and kill people who try to, you know, come into their uh, field. Right. Um, and and so they try to create an economic environment that is conducive to their uh, their view of the world. So you've got your welfare state, your own employment your social security and everything like that it doesn't matter if you're you know uh, uh, terribly successful we'll just fucking feed you and then you have things like we had on uh, on the uh, i think it was the previous or oh, two episodes back we had uh, um uh, angel adams for black history month where she's like this mother of 15 fucking children uh, and, and, you know, won't go to work and is saying like, somebody needs to pay for all, as a matter of fact, hang on a second. Somebody needs to pay for all my yeah. children. These fucking lunatics. I, I've seen that video. I, that is I insane, but I, I know the exact video that you're playing right now, just from that audio clip. Yeah, exactly. And we have we've been doing and we'll we'll do before we end the program today, uh, Black History Month, you know, and so everybody's trying to, you know, uplift the downtrodden black man. And so we've sort of gone and uh, done some some uh, maybe not so proud moments in black history <laughs> where where uh, uh, people are trying to get in. Uh, 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 I don't know. Make, they're making a, uh, uh, shall we say, not the, the best portrayal of uh, uh, black people in America. Uh, by the way, two one eight nine three six zero. 
0815 Radical Agenda on Skype if you would like to be on the program. I have gotten a whole bunch of um, uh, Skype message requests. I don't know. Oh, you know what? I have not called into my conference line. <laughs> I can. No, I, yeah, I. Uh, oh, I'm terrible at this. I got all. I we. I was so thoroughly enjoying our conversation before the show that I. I actually forgot to. Um, to bring on our. Um, our fucking. Um, no. What thing. was the. Um, what was the name of the thing that you brought up? It was Arc. What. RK selection theory. Um, it's RK. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's a book that I I recently read and and the idea behind it is that there's uh, as I mentioned when I started the program like I sort of went into a study of genetics like what uh, you know I I'm not a guy who believes in the supernatural okay you know I'm not an atheist plus guy but I would go so far as to call myself an atheist and so uh, I try to find biological explanations for the things that are going on in the world we are matter and energy right so you know whatever thought I have going on in my head is not something that was uh, you know blessed to me by some fucking higher power it's a it's a, a chemical process in my brain you know and so People, the the idea behind it uh, is, is is it's a theory of evolutionary psychology, where uh, let's say let's say you grew up in an environment or so, some some group of people somewhere came up in an environment where uh, they had uh, uh, just food was plentiful, right? Resources are everywhere, and they don't really have to worry about agriculture, right? We just have everything that we want is here, and, you know, we're, you were in this environment with copious amounts of resources. We can breed indiscriminately, right? And, and then you say you have another population somewhere else that uh, has to be wary of things like winters, okay? We have to, we have to uh, uh, raise crops. We have to keep animals. We have to make sure that we don't uh, use up our seed crop, this sort of thing. And so you're going to be a little bit more, shall we say, conservative about your breeding practices, right? And these things will be conducive to different types of um, <clears throat> different types of thought processes, right? And they'll be they'll they'll have an impact on the evolutionary psychology of those peoples. And so, uh, so how how does something like RK then? Uh, how do, how does a selection theory? How does that play into something like Strauss Howe uh, generational theory, where it's you, you've heard the the argument, and I, I'm sure we're seeing this take place right now, where we've had a very politically correct kind of um, environment for, I'd say, God, the last 20 to 30 years, I think is fair to say, where we've seen a lot of social justice, we've seen this kind of mentality, this left-leaning mentality. But a lot of people uh, have really started to notice, and I think you've noticed this with the Trump presidency and just the actions of different organizations and individuals, where the pendulum is now, uh, it's kind of shifting, it's swinging back more towards the conservative side. When you look at something like Strauss Howe, they talk about how, you know, the generations that follow one another kind of almost follow a cyclical pattern where it's basically, fuck you, mom and dad, the theory. Uh, if you're conservative, I'm liberal. If you're liberal, I'm conservative. So how does something like RK, do you, if you, are you familiar with Strauss? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not familiar, familiar with Strauss Howe, but I'll tell you the RK theory on that, and then you can give me how, how Strauss Howe relates it to it. Okay. Okay. So it is sort of cyclical and it has to do with um, uh, resource scarcity. OK, so in, in, a, in a presence in the presence of copious amounts of resources, then, then uh, the theory goes that people will tend to lean more liberal, uh, that that when resources are readily available, you're a little less concerned about, shall we say, property rights. Uh, you're like, OK, fine, you know, spread the wealth around or whatever like this. And this this is uh, uh, the environment becomes conducive to that way of thinking, whereas if you, there are uh, scarce resources, then there is uh, then there's a tendency upon the society to to care more about resource scarcity and and uh, property rights and that sort of thing. But on top of that. <clears throat> It, the, these things, uh, there's there's two parts to it. One is just the biology of it, uh, but there's the resource scarcity. That's that part. And then the other part would be he makes like the example, say, um, at World War II, you have a bunch of people go off to fight a war, and he says that most of the um, most of the uh, case selected people will be, uh, you know, go off to the war, and then a lot of the males who are left behind will be more are selective, and they'll have this massive breeding opportunity, and you have this uh, this uh, group of people who are uh, bred in in one environment and then the soldiers so all when, come the, home. when the men are away the cucks will play essentially it, it, precisely <laughs> you've got, right you, the defenders of society have gone off to die and you've got the new male basically left behind to breed at an exponential rate it, and change society uh, precisely and then and then when the when the soldiers all come home then they have this massive breeding opportunity and then they they, they come you know not so long after and that sort of these uh, because of these cycles that you will have uh, uh, different narratives become prevailing at, at certain periods of time and one of the things that he talks about is sort of that you know uh, whereas the theory is that liberals 
uh, you know, there's there's sort of this narrative that goes on that liberals don't like warfare. I don't find that to be true. Uh, they they sort of fight warfare in, a, in like a half ass pussyfoot manner, right? And so they'll continue conflicts for long periods of time, which we've seen with Barack Obama going and like leafleting ISIS before he bombs their trucks or whatever. Hey, guys, we're going to break your shit. You might want to get out of here. Um, and so this this goes on. Right. And and it seems uh, the, the theory would be that, you know, this is a, a thing designed to prolong conflict, to send more of the warrior class off to die in order to uh, advance their evolutionary advantage. OK, yeah, that, that's really interesting. Yeah, I, I'm I yeah, I'm not familiar with it before this. I, it's something I'd probably definitely read up on because it sounds like an entertaining read at the very least. Um, it's it's certainly yes. Yeah, there's no question about it that it's that it's a very uh it's a, it's a very entertaining read. Let's uh let's uh let's take a um a caller here. Um let me see here. Uh, da, 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 da. uh let's go to Ryan on Skype. Ryan is on Skype. If uh, if you're trying to get on the program, you just send me a Skype message and I will call you as I have just done with Ryan. You're on the radical agenda. What's your agenda? Ryan going once. All right. Nice try, Ryan. Thanks anyway. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's go. To I guess Ryan's agenda was a bathroom break. Yeah, apparently up, so. Yeah. If you're uh, if you're not uh, you know ready to look, you call into this program to improve it, not for me to entertain you. God damn it. If you want to be entertained, just listen on fucking YouTube. Tino, you're on the radical agenda. What's your agenda? Is this a problem with my Skype? Uh, because this, the second caller who's not coming in. Uh, uh, I'm not certain. Uh, all right, I'm hanging up on Tino. I'm going to try... Uh, uh, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Um, uh, let's try Let's try uh, Sickman. Sickman, or Sickman, however you want to pronounce it. We'll try him, and if this does not work, then I will, uh, I will play a fucking audio clip or something and try to fix it. Sickman, you're on the Radical Agenda. What's your agenda? <laughs> okay, stupid fucking assholes. You, you know, all right. Well, at least that means we've got audio. Uh, well, audio is functioning perfectly well. Audio is functioning perfectly well, and we've got assholes who like to Skype in and play fucking clips instead of participating in the program. Let's go to Beyond Sadness is on Skype. <clears throat> Beyond Sadness, you're on the Radical Agenda. What's your agenda? How's it going, man? Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you fine, pal. Go ahead. All right. Uh, not much. Just a... Uh... Did you really Former just call there. into a fucking radio program and say not much when I asked you what's up? Yeah, man. Can you get your fucking answer. act together and help me do a show? Go ahead. Come on. Fine. I'll do it. God damn it. All right. So, uh, former military veteran here. Thank you for um, your service. Thank you for your support, man. But I'm no longer in. Uh, basically, uh, the main reason I got out is because... Everything became too PC, and there were they started with uh, diversity quotas and things like that, and it was basically just going off the rails. Yeah, I'll fucking and, say. Uh, well, now yeah, they now pretty, they now they're trying to what they went it all fucking genderless, right? You're not allowed to fucking what is it? They're going to change it so we don't call you sir or ma'am anymore. Uh, I'm up, I'm not up to date with that. The last I saw was in a uh, twenty early twenty fifteen. There was a memo to be able to allow uh, transgender soldiers, and yeah. I heard that was a fucking that was a fucking mess. Well, it's fantastic, you know. I mean, if you want to go uh, take all the fucking trannies out of the country and put them on the front lines as cannon fodder, I can sort of understand the process behind that. But like, they're they're not. That's not what it is. They're not like, hey, here's a good way to get rid of the mentally ill. What they're doing it is they're they're trying to be like, hey, you're just the same as everybody else, huh? Well, I'm a bit of a. I'm a bit of an authoritarian. I believe everybody should serve in the military, in the military, in whatever capacity they can. <sighs> well, you know, no. I, 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 um, um, I can understand why you would feel that way. I generally don't, but that's more or less because I despise the fucking government that presently stands, and I don't really feel like going and dying for the state of Israel. But uh, I can, I can understand why you would feel that way. It's, it's more of a thing of uh, growing up, being an adult. You know, it helps you uh, develop a certain. Uh, professionalism and self-awareness you know you but it doesn't seem it doesn't seem say, oh to, shit it, it doesn't seem like they're really conducive to that now right i mean they're trying to turn it into another fucking kindergartner thing like they're doing in the fucking universities right they're trying to make it all sensitive and whatnot right well yeah you gotta realize that the military is a microcosm of the the country that it belongs to as a whole so it's always going to be a one percent of the of the majority of the country 
Right on. That's that's uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's a worthwhile uh, uh, thing to point out. You got any uh, questions for uh, for uh, Jim here? Actually, I have a question uh, for him. Oh, okay, uh, Jim's got a question mind. for you. Go ahead. Uh, so, okay. what do you think of the recent news? Well, it's twofold. What do you think of the recent news about allowing women in? Do you think it's going to impact the uh, the training standards we have right now in the military? And then the second one is, do you think they should be drafted? That's the conversation going on right now. Uh, second question, yes. First question, yes as well. Because already, I think I sent you before a couple of tables where uh, you can see the skewed standards. For example, women get to have 10% extra body fat than men do. Which is also ridiculous. The, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't think tits would account for all that. But <laughs> no, they definitely that, wouldn't. That, the, the other thing would be uh, the physical fitness standards are really, really fucking skewed. Uh, when I was married, um, my wife was also in the military. and. For her to pass her test, it was it wasn't for her to pass and max her test. It wasn't even enough for me to actually pass mine. So really, it was. It's yeah. It's pretty yeah, uh, pretty skewed. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. And and I gotta say, I take uh, I do not like the idea of women being in the military in the fucking first place. We had a, a gentleman on from um, from um, a Danish gentleman on the show. Who you know? He explained like they uh, in, they let the women into the military there, and they're like in boot camp, and she's running around fucking everybody because, of course, you know I, I don't blame her. I mean, she's just surrounded by penises pointing at her in every fucking direction, and of course, it's gonna. She's like, oh my god, all of these dicks, and she ends up fucking all of these guys, which creates all of this turmoil within the uh, with, within the barracks and whatnot. Yeah, there was um. There was this uh, this last case with the uh, two or three females that graduated ranger school. Turns out their older uh, older older testings was skewed, and uh, all the heroic things that they supposedly did were bullshit. So, so it's all a smokescreen. Uh, does that uh, that would scare me if I was in the military? The thought that if I was in uh, some kind of a conflict, if I was in a war zone, and I get hit and I need somebody to pull my ass back, uh, that they're not going to be able to do it. They'll physically be unable to lift me or to pull me back or to do the kind of physical stuff that's required of somebody who's a grunt. You know what I mean? And yeah, it's terrifying to think that there are going to be all these women out there who are basically not going to be able to do that. Yeah, I was I was an infantryman for six, almost seven years. And uh, I did my time, you know, and I was, I was normally in between 180 and 200 pounds, and I'm like 5'7", so I'm a short shit. But with all 200 pounds plus... 10 pounds of the uniform and boots plus 50 somewhat pounds of body armor plus some other number of assorted shit plus your weapon plus your ammunition you end up weighing about 300 pounds which is enough to set up a fucking tank mine so well maybe the un can sign some uh, kind of wartime accords that the enemy needs to take a diversity break to allow women to gather up the wounded as to be you know equal and fair on the battlefield that should work right yeah i know right yeah. Well, my main concern was always like our medics, because you have a platoon of sixty grunts and one medic, and yeah, it's not gonna, always going to be the medic that pulls your ass out. It's going to be the other grunts. But normally, our medics were always either really sweet, skinny guys that just happen to be really fucking strong, or seven feet tall fucking Samoan guys that happen <laughs> to be really that happen to be really fucking sweet. Well, I mean, this is this is. Uh, I've got a story here from uh, Army Times talking about one of the Army's first female combat engineer recruits is a deserter. Uh, she uh -huh. apparently fucking fled on on her uh, on her guys there. The other thing that you have going on is that while they're in there fucking everybody in their barracks, uh, if there is a time when they are called to war and they do not feel like going, all they have to do is allow one of those dicks to not wear a condom, and then they become pregnant and they can uh, and they can uh, achieve all of the benefits without taking any of the risks. God, yeah. could you imagine yeah. that nightmare of a woman actually giving birth on a battlefield? She hides the pregnancy well, and then. That, that that situation, I, I can't even imagine what the hell a unit is going to do if that ever takes place. Yeah, yeah I can only imagine. You, you, you all showered together, uh, you know, male with males, females with females. So I don't think a female in the battlefield is going to be able to hide her 
pregnancy. For yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like a good idea. And then compelling them into warfare makes me furious. I was watching the, uh, and th I thank you very much for the call, Beyond Sadness. Um, uh, look, I'm not even going to bother calling into the phone system. We're only using Skype today. Radical Agenda on Skype, if you'd like to be on the program, we have a bunch of people waiting to get on. Uh, but yeah, you mentioned the, the drafting thing, and I was furious. I watched the uh, the Republican debate over the weekend, and they, um, they, they asked the question of drafting women in. Marco Rubio, Jeb Bush, and everybody who did answer the question uh, said that they were like, they acted like it was completely uncontroversial to, to register women for the selective service and compel them into fucking combat. And I was like, are you out of your goddamn mind? Like, aside from all of the problems that come with just having women in the military, the idea that you're going to, you know, rip daughters out of their father's arms is bad enough. You know, a draft in general, I don't generally like the idea, but we all sort of understand that that's the fucking nature of the nation state, that it will conscript people into warfare before its existence is threatened. Uh, you know, to do this to uh, to do this to the women, I, I do not like the idea. What's your take? Uh, I, I think what we're seeing right now is, you, you know, sometimes the best way to win an argument is to intentionally lose it and to give the other person exactly what they want. And I think what we're seeing from a lot of people in the military and a lot of politicians is exactly that. I, I think they've been faced and argued with so much about you need to let women, you know, women are completely equal. They can do everything that a man can do. You need to let them into the military. So I, I think it's reached the point where they're like, you know what? Okay, we're going to give you exactly that. We're going to let them into the military. We're going to let them do everything that a man does. We're even going to draft them. And then when you see the reality actually taking place before you, when we put aside all the political correctness and all the, you know, hug boxing and snowflakery, when women are actually on the battlefield, when they're actually going through the training programs, when they actually get drafted, and that reality hits them, they will suddenly understand why they should have agreed with us in the first place that this was a bad idea. So I get the feeling that that's kind of what we're seeing is they're like, okay, give them what they want. That's what they want. Let's just give it to them and let them see why it's a mistake. And, At least that's my hope. I really hope they don't think it's a good idea. Well, I mean, I think I, I, I sadly think that we're about to get exactly that, that they're going to that they're going to get this lesson. And I am not looking forward to it. I mean, I do not like, you know, I obviously don't like the the, the feminist, uh, the, the you know, uh, uh, give us all the equality and all the socially valued areas and then hold us responsible for nothing. I don't like that. But I also, you know, I'm not looking for gender equality. I think that there are fucking roles for us to play here. And, uh, you know, sending women into goddamn war zones does not uh, sound like another one. Let's, uh, let's, Ryan uh, was trying to get back in. Let's see if he fixed his shit. Ryan, you're on the radical agenda. Can you hear me now? I sure can, buddy. What's up? Excellent. Okay. So I want to bring up the, um, this backdoor Obama gun grab with the mandatory depression screening that they're trying to push through. I know they just did something with HHS and um, something with the HIPAA and being able to work around so that they're able to share information with, uh, I guess, whoever keeps track of like who, what government agency makes sure that you're not allowed to buy guns if you're crazy. Um, I don't know if you guys have like heard about this at all and it's been in the news cycle a little bit. Uh, a little bit. I've heard a little bit about this, but why don't you explain it so people listening can better understand it? Well, I mean, that's, I mean, all I've seen is basically what I've been consuming from InfoWars and Alex Jones, and I know it can be a little over the top, but I think he's kind of spot on with this. But the basic idea is they're pushing for all your um, health insurance um, to forcibly provide you um, depression screening and possibly even making it something, I believe, where when you sign up, you have to go through and do it so that everybody has to go through a depression screening. And then if you, you know, you have a bad day and you say that you're, um, even moderately suicidal, that then kind of gives a legal opening for uh, gun confiscation. That's that's kind of my basic premise, basic understanding of, of this issue. Are, are they going to do that with everything? Like if I want to go buy a, a silverware set, are they going to take the knives away from me? Do I need a depression screening for that? I might, I might cut my wrist. Maybe take I mean, the car away because I might drive it into a wall. I, I don't know. I mean, it's just... It's this weird, uncomfortable kind of poke to see, like, you know, how far can we go in this kind of, like, overextension that, you know, it could be, like, a really nightmare legalish battle. Imagine if Hillary gets in, they're able to actually follow through with this, continue down this policy path. 
Um, and then, like, how hard it is to just get off the terror suspect list if they, like, mislabel you. I remember hearing something like, well, congressman got put on there by accident. And it was, like, six months with even all his connections and the legal process that he had to go through to be able to fly again. I mean, that just sounds like absolute insanity. I mean, that, that's something yeah, that's kind we of... Do like, not, we do not have the benefit of, you know, going to court and contesting this. I think, you know, the, the, the congressman was, uh, I believe, uh, as a senator, Ted Kennedy, I believe it was, you know, and he's uh, he's obviously got some privileges that you and I do not have. You know, hate to harp on privilege on this program, of course, but, uh, you know, uh, the senators certainly have a little bit better access to the government apparatus than the average citizen. I mean, there was uh, the terrorist watch list. Uh, they they said I had a story recently, something like a few several dozen Homeland Security Department employees were on that list. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, and I, so I it, still I recently went through this. I'm sorry, I, I recently went through this. Uh, I I still haven't been approved. I actually uh, I went to go buy some firearms. Regular listeners of the program will be familiar. I I went to go buy uh, a, a a couple of guns over at the local gun shop here, and my purchase got delayed. And I was sort of doing this specifically because I was afraid of these executive orders coming down the pipe. And this is nearing a month ago. They delayed the purchase. The fucking Department of Justice still has not gotten back to the gun shop. Luckily. Uh, if they don't get back to them within three days, the gun store has the discretion to release it to you. And I got my fucking firearms, but uh, you know they they're they're going crazy with this. Have you already seen them do it with the vets? I remember there was some it was some southern little town where the sheriff was actually going to go there and like confiscate this guy's um, guns because if you can't do your own taxes, you can be declared as like mentally incompetent and not able to take care of yourself and that's a, a, a back door for confiscation and like people in the town again like came to this guy's house and formed this little barricade and then the i think the sheriff said that he refused to enforce it or whatnot um but that i i just it's very it's very orwellian and, and kind of frightening yeah it's it's completely the, the the gun thing is 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 fucking bonkers and they um i don't know that they're specifically discriminating against vets, but this is the thing that they're always talking about, you know, whether it's a, uh, they're, they're trying to find any excuse to, to knock anybody off and not, uh, and not allow them to buy. And it's, it's getting completely out of control. Yeah. I mean, this definitely feels like a backdoor gun grab. I don't know um, if there's anything backdoor about it. I mean, it, you know, he says it right to your fucking face. And if you look at like the left wing media, I mean, he says, we're not trying to violate your second amendments. We're not trying to take your guns, but go read the fucking Huffington Post sometime. They're like, yeah, we, what we need is a disarmament. We need a nationwide grab your fucking guns and, and no more, uh, no more uh, private firearms ownership. That's the agenda. And they're, and they're not going to stop with it until they're fucking shot in the face and thrown out of a helicopter. And I thank you very much for the call, Ryan. Um, let's see, uh, we've got, who else we got here? Team, let's, Tino's trying to, to, Tino says he fixed his shit. We'll try him again. <laughs> let's, uh, da, 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 da. uh, Tino, you're on the radical agenda. What's your agenda? Are you fucking serious, bro? Jesus Christ. I get, I need a call screener. You know, this, uh, this, uh, program has been, uh, has been, uh, has been growing a little bit and, uh, hopefully we get to, uh, to, uh, to fucking hire somebody to help me with it because this is a one-man show live show and sometimes these things can uh you know uh fuck up the goddamn rotation adam you're on the radical agenda what's your agenda hey what's up uh hey mr mediker i'm back Hello, adam <laughs> you remember me yeah <laughs> the mathematical jew yeah welcome back <laughs> uh so today I so, so i don't know if you guys are interested uh Ms. Justin Trudeau said something. He made an announcement today about his position on uh, ISIS. Uh, I have not heard today's uh, Justin Trudeau madness. Why don't you fill us in? Uh, yeah, so I, I watched the clip of it. I can't, I'm not a recorder, but essentially he said, so he said something to the effect of the terrorists want us to be afraid, so we're going to ignore them as not to give in to their will, whims. So we're just going to fucking ignore ISIS, but we're also going to take in refugees. That's brilliant. What what could go wrong, Adam? That sounds like a, a, a brilliant idea. Just put your head in the sand and hope for the best. Yeah, man. Like, <laughs> well, what 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 you know? The the thing is, is that what they're afraid of? You know, they, they're not they're not proving their fucking bravery when they're doing this, right? They're they're calling. They're trying to. Uh, they're they're being afraid of uh, being labeled a racist. Is what it is. They are the most cowardly fucking people around you know they're like oh well we're not gonna we're not gonna give into fear of all of this da, 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 da. 
And when you know when Trudeau said uh, he's the, he said, oh, we're going to bring in 25,000 25, Syrian refugees because it's 2015. I was like, all right, fine, great. The next massive wave of illegal immigration into the United States will be fucking white Canadians, and uh, we'll we'll gladly send you our fucking blacks, Trudeau. <laughs> yeah, the whole immigration, the whole Syrian thing, it's crazy. It's like, uh, you know, we're supposed to, there is, de there is supposed to be uh, like a freedom of speech and a separation of church and st or not church, um, like uh, politicalness and in the, uh, the government, right? The, or the schools, right? But like, you go yeah, to right. a, you go to a, but you know, I'm, I'm a high school student. You go to like any class and you've got the teachers all preaching like, oh, we just got to be more accepting of these people. They're being forced from their homes, right? Well, I mean, this is the entire thing. I mean, anybody who thinks that your education establishment is going to be in any way separate from your political institutions is out of their goddamn mind. The entire purpose of the political education, the, the entire purpose of public education is to raise up uh, some uh, some group of fucking citizens who are obedient to the state. And, you know, and I thank you very much for the call. Let's go to Smithers. Smithers is on the Skype, Sam. Eh? Smithers. That's uh, Smithers. Welcome to the Radical Agenda. What's your agenda? Hey. There. Um, sorry if I sound like complete shit. That's because I'm. You do. Uh, I'm. Yes. Your apology is not I'm, fucking accepted. Now get on with it. Yeah, I was diagnosed with the Zika virus. That's why. That's why I sound so horrible. But um, I wanted to talk about. Uh, well, make the sure you European go around Union. and fuck lots of American women because it's now sexually yeah. transmitted, and apparently that's what Barack Obama wants: is a bunch of small-headed people who would do whatever the fuck he tells yeah. them to. More yeah, voters, but, yeah. But what I wanted to talk about was uh, the European Union. And so uh, right now, obviously, um, a lot of people are growing. There's a much, in the uh, UK at least, there we are seeing more and more people are becoming Eurosceptics, which means they are becoming skeptical of the European Union. They're starting to realize, hang on, are we really so sure we want to stay in the European Union? Because it's been causing us a lot of, you know, turmoil, especially with the uh, refugee crisis in Europe, because we've just been taking in so, so many, you know, refugees, um, not so much in the UK, but in other parts of uh, Europe, most definitely. And so I'm thinking that, uh, well, obviously my question for you guys would be, do you think that the UK should perhaps leave the EU? I've got an yes. opinion on that, but I'll let you go first there, uh, Medicare. Yeah, absolutely. I did a video on uh, Euroscepticism about three years ago. I absolutely think you should leave uh, the European Union. I don't think it's beneficial to you, and I don't think uh, it's working out for Europe very well, to be honest with you. You've got bureaucrats that are enacting laws that supersede local governments. It's ridiculous. You've got immigration that's basically open. You get a passport through one country, and then you're moving between borders uh, un you know, unhindered. It's ridiculous. I don't think it's beneficial at this point. That's my take on it. I would encourage everybody who's listening to check out a video by Tom Woods. Uh, well, Tom Woods was the one giving the speech. It's it's uh, on Mises Media, I believe, is the YouTube channel, and it's titled uh, Secession, the, the Reasonable Option That Everyone Ignores. And he talks about this this trend towards centralization, that everything, uh, everybody says that once you have, everything should go towards this, uh, the, the progress, the forward motion of the world is large central states. And so you've got, you know, obviously uh, the, the American colonies, come together on the United States federal government and more and more they centralize power here. You've got uh, Europe, uh, you know, Germany was once a bunch of independent city-states and whatnot, and it, it forms together to become uh, what we now know as Germany. Uh, and, of course, then you all get together under this banner of the European Union. And he goes through all of these different examples of just how fucking disastrous this has been and how you've had over over history, you've had these, these far better uh, living conditions and quality of life and progress for mankind or the, the, under these smaller smaller states. So I, I certainly think that uh, uh, getting out from under the banner of the European Union is the best thing for not only for the UK, but for everybody who is stupid enough to find themselves under that banner in the first place. Um, uh, there's another thing I, I read recently, uh, Democracy, the God That Failed by Hans Hermann Hoppe. And he talks about, look, there's this, there's this natural gravitation for this to happen under uh, under democratic rule i mean under under kings and that sort of thing of course they wanted to expand their territory but this necessarily led to uh you know conflicts which could cause him to lose his fucking kingdom and so he was kept in check with democracy the i the idea that uh you know we're all better off with the territorial monopolist uh popularly elected i mean the national the natural gravity for that 
would be towards a planetary government. And if you if you think that things are fucked up right now, wait until there's nowhere else for you to go. I mean, uh, uh, we have to have uh, ways of escaping uh, uh, governments. Otherwise, uh, we're going to we're going to be in a lot of goddamn trouble. Mm hmm. No, I have to agree with you. I, I think the, the thing that has definitely opened there are a lot of, you know, uh, British people's eyes has def has been the uh, the migrant crisis because people have realized, hang on, we're taking in, you know, so many uh, of these migrants and we're just seeing, you know, many, many accounts of just, you know, rapes and the attacks and crime waves all over countries like, you know, Germany and Sweden and countries like, you know, you know, Sweden and Denmark are actually putting in measures to try and stop, um, to try and stop, ref, uh, you know, migrants from coming into those countries. You know, Sweden is, you know, now uh, what, what is it? Deporting eighty thousand uh, migrants, or what they say, and which Denmark does not come planted. naturally to Sweden. I mean, inclusivity, you know, hyper inclusivity was as close as Sweden had to a natural religion, national religion. And now they're realizing, like, Jesus Christ, they're fucking raping blonde hair out of existence. We can't tolerate this anymore. Yeah. As well as uh, Denmark introduced, what is it? Uh, I believe it was called the Jewelry Bill, in which, um, unless, yeah, in which uh, they go through your prized possessions, and anything that's over, I believe, what is it, like, oh, a certain amount, the, the Danish government takes it to cover for, you know, taxes and all that, unless it's a prized possession, in which case you can keep it. So, um, after of course, then all these fucking liberals who have no regard for private property whatsoever, who are like, let's tax the fucking crap out of our own citizens, are like, oh my god, you can't take anything from the refugees! Yeah, but also Denmark have been doing other things, such as uh, on benefits, in order to try and, you know, stop, just as a kind of place, a way of saying, you know, if you're a refugee, don't come to Denmark, you do not want to come here. But so I definitely have to con congratulate the Danes for, you know, measures that they've been taking during the, uh, the refugee crisis. And uh, hopefully, and hopefully, you know, other, you know, uh, a lot of other, you know, European countries are waking up to this bullshit and realizing, hang on, the European Union has been lying to us, especially the German government. I mean, the German government has been censoring, uh, just been censoring Facebook if you post anti-migrant posts on Facebook. Oh yeah, I'm presently I'm presently post blocked from Facebook because I said after Cologne, uh, not even me, but somebody on a on a page that I also admin gun rights uh, is the name of the Facebook page. Somebody posted a a, a, a post that said, hey, you know uh, these people should have been armed so they can fucking defend themselves when this shit happens. And Facebook banned all of the admins of the group, and I got thirty days fucking post blocked from Facebook because of this shit. They uh, I I've read on here before there was the thing with uh, Zuckerberg had a hot mic next to him talking to uh, Angela Merkel that they're saying, hey, you need to you know clamp down on this hate speech, you know, because all of a sudden you know migration is not a fucking race, but you know now this behavior if you talk against this behavior. Now you're a fucking racist. Cool. Yep. Well, anyway, All right. that's I thank you very much for the call, uh, Smithers. At, um, uh, da -da 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 um, where did he go? See, I wanted I wanted his opinion on Enoch oh, Powell if he was going to talk about the UK leaving the EU. Uh, they can't really say they haven't been warned about this ahead of time. I mean, it's not like it should come as a surprise at this point. Well, I mean, that's exactly what it is. Uh, you, you'd think that, uh, um, unfortunately, people have better uh, hindsight than than foresight. Sadly, um, let's go to uh, let's go to Brian. Yeah, I'm sorry if we. Uh, I'll try to make sure that uh, you get whatever point you have out before we go on to next callers. From now on, I apologize. No, that's fine. It's fine. It, it was a passing thought, not a big deal. Uh, Brian, I uh, was trying to get on uh, via Skype, and uh, maybe maybe he'll actually. Uh, answer his fucking Skype and come on. You guys are terribly irresponsible, all you fucking callers. What's with your audience, buddy? I mean, my audience is well-trained. Uh, Brian, you're on the Radical <laughs> Agenda. What's your agenda? Brian? It's like a oh, you stupid <laughs> fucking bastards. <laughs> Uh, okay. Welcome to the internet. That's that's what the audience is. Welcome to the internet. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's what makes it so charming. <laughs> all right. Uh, 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 Darren is on Skype. Uh, we do have, uh, we do have a lot of the, uh, Skype callers. You're a popular guy. Darren, you're on a radical agenda. What's your agenda? Oh, hi, Chris. <clears throat> I just want to call in about some, um, I have, like, two things on the refugee crisis. Yeah, go ahead. Um, one is, um, from RTs at Germany. They're paying some migrant countries, like Morocco and Algeria, to take back the refugees. And some of these countries are not accepting the money to take these refugees back. 
Of course they're not. They're like, I, I, it'd be nice to have the money, but you know how much we've got to pay to take care of the lowest fucking forms of life that our society had to offer? That's why we sent them to you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it is actually an invasion that is going on that these countries are doing to Europe because, you know, they, the thing is that they can't defeat Europe and Islamify it via war. They have to do it by migration and fertility and ruining their fertility. What what do you think what do you think about that, Jim? Do you think that it's an effort to Islamify Europe? I think you're gonna have a caliphate if people don't pull their head out of their ass and start dealing with the actual immigrant issue before them. These people have been pretty outspoken about what they want to have happen. I, I, I don't know how anybody can live in the delusion that that's not what they want. Multiculturalism doesn't exist. It's their culture they want and they will install it if they are allowed to. Yeah, it seems yeah. to me, I mean, uh, you know, they, they talk about all this fucking how fantastic fucking diversity is going to be, but that does not seem to be the goal, right? I mean, there's there's one culture, you know, you're going to have a dominant culture in a society, and it seems to me like the, the goal would be to shift the fucking dominant culture to uh, to something that is wholly hostile to Western civilization. Well, look yeah. at what happened in uh, England. They they were talking about, was it the MPs that had to go to a government building because they were redoing something, they were refurnishing their offices, and it's under Sharia law. They had an Islam bill, basically, that they rented out government properties, and one of the deals, one of the, the portions of that, I think it was Whitehall, one of the portions of that was that Sharia law was in place in the government institution. So, you know, like Dean Esme was telling me, they don't want a caliphate, they don't want uh, Sharia law in place in Europe, that's, that's ridiculous. You have government buildings in England right now that are under Sharia law, and that government officials must abide by Sharia law when they are on premises. That is ridiculous. Yeah, and you've got these, uh, you know, in, in France, they've got the no-go zones, which nobody, you know, some people deny are existing. But, I mean, you see videos from these places of people, uh, you know, harassing people on the streets. You're not allowed to have alcohol here. This is, you know, is Sharia law and shit. I mean, it's happening all over the place. And the idea that, uh, I mean, just, yeah, I mean, you don't even have to get into anything sinister about it to say so. I mean, how much more would I like it if the entire world thought like me? Right. I mean, if I had uh, if I could go and uh, force everybody to think the way I do, uh, believe me, the, the temptation there would be there to fucking do it. And I and I don't put it past other people to do that. And if uh, and if you're uh, if you're from a culture where it's OK to violently force other people to do things, then uh, then it would stand to reason that uh, that would be your course of action. Yeah. And another thing I wanted to point out was um, from this BBC article about the um, African migrants start going to Israel is that Israel pays these migrants to leave. And what like, and like the African migrants are, are like an idea, like certain among like the African migrant provinces is that they use this money to just travel to Europe. Well, yeah, and when it doesn't fucking pan out, there's a bunch of people who had gotten kicked out of uh, uh, one of the European countries, and I thank you very much for the call, Darren. Uh, and then they, they went over to uh, to Russia, and they tried to uh, grope some gals at a Russian nightclub, and the Russian guys beat the fucking shit out of them and sent them to the hospital. Uh, and I, I have to think that uh, you're gonna you're gonna start having more and more of that, and all these you know peaceful people. So you know, be, uh, we, we just want peace with all these people from these other cultures. It's all you want, people who are destroying everything. Yeah, you're gonna have a whole lot of fucking violence in your society, and it's not going to uh, it's not gonna pan out very well for uh, for you. Uh, let's right. go to um, let's bring David in here. David has a story from the uh, International Students for Liberty conference that he wanted to tell us about. David, you're on the radical agenda. Hello, can you hear me? I hear you fine, pal. Go ahead. All right, sorry. I am having... Broke some gals at a Russian nightclub in the Russian hey, guys. Hey, you got to fucking... fucking you cannot... Oh, them. Jesus Christ. Them to the... Do you people never fucking listen to talk radio? You don't know how to fucking mute your shit before you call into a radio program? Um... <laughs> Are you enjoying it? You liking the uh, the internet portion of this? Oh no, I mean, I've, I, this is not the this. Obviously, uh, you know, we take calls on the air, and I have to deal with this from time to time. It, it's a little bit more prevalent because I think that uh, you have uh, increased the size of my live audience a little bit, and I appreciate that. Uh, let's go. Oh yeah, uh, wait till they bring their A game. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> Just wait for it. Uh, Dark side Phil is on Skype. Let's see. Uh, let's see if, oh, fantastic! Let's see if I'm a big fan of Phil. This will be good. Oh, fantastic! Hopefully, he knows how to use his fucking computer, and he doesn't ruin my program. Uh, uh, oh, please pick up Dark Side Phil. I think you can bring just a world of wonder to this conversation. Uh, Dark Side Phil going once. Call failed. Sorry, Phil. Uh, let's oh, see. That, uh, that's Phil for you. You can't ever get that computer to work. <laughs> Savage Pleb is on Skype. Uh, uh, Pleb, you're on the radical agenda. What's your fucking agenda? Well, my agenda is Jim, where's the new fucking video? 
Oh, I know. I'm well. terrible, aren't I? I need to get. Yeah, I, I need to be punctual. Too. I never do it. Oh, and I see you've brought your chat in with you tonight. I uh, think Christopher's going to absolutely love that. Oh, he's gonna. It's going to be great. It's going to be just some A plus top tier stuff. Yep, it's going to be great. Yeah, I had, to, like I had to ban so, a bunch of flutters. They were fucking filling the chat up with stupid shit about their their fucking assholes getting filled with something or other, and I had to <laughs> I had to fucking block them. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it seems oh, to be under control now. Oh, oh, you just wait until the uh, until the four chan crowd really wake up. They're going to make your. Yeah, they're just going to light your stream up, mate. All right. What's uh, what else is going time, on, but, buddy? Uh, well. Uh, tell you what, I've got a. Um, I suppose my agenda tonight is uh, I'm actually, I'm actually a university student myself, so I'm pretty much at the centre of the bullshit, so to speak. Okay. Um, here, here in uh, here in Europe, right at the centre of it, got a you know good. Uh, and what's uh, tell tell us about it then? Uh, well, the refugee crisis basically it's it's worse than you even you in America are hearing about it. It really is. Um, speaking from the UK, we don't really have any problem with it at the moment, so there's nothing that's affecting me or anyone I know directly. But I've heard a lot of stories from people I know who are living in other European countries, for example, or people in Croatia. I've heard from some friends I spoke to over there, people actually being kicked out of their university dorms to make way for refugees. So people who have paid in to the system, to, you know, to the university system, to have their dorms set up there, they've been told by the universities, you're leaving, we're putting in refugees. And, you know, stories from, from France about, you know, I mean, I'm sure you already know about the no-go areas in France and Paris, places like that. In Didn't Belgium, something especially. similar happen in, in Germany where they were kicking people out of their apartments to make room for refugees? And it wasn't just people on government assistance. It was actual people that had their own apartment they paid for were being oh, relocated. Yeah. It, yeah, being relocated out of their own property. That's correct. I've got, I actually do have a friend in Germany um, he did tell me about that. He didn't tell me. He didn't say he had anybody who he knew personally who had had that happen to hit, had that happen to them. But yeah, that is happening. It's like I said, you won't hear about this stuff in America because you only hear about it from word of mouth. Even within Europe, these are the kind of things that the media does not touch on. The kind of things that you will not hear about in any kind of scope outside private conversations. Well, I had. Uh, I is had that why they're? I'm sorry. Is ahead. that why they're censoring Facebook and the other different online platforms? Is they don't want word of mouth to carry these stories forward? It seems like it's being suppressed oh, yeah. intentionally. Absolutely, you have to realize at this point, in at this point, not only in Europe, but I think you know in Canada and probably coming to the states soon. It's not as bad there, but at this point, word of mouth is really the only real form of protest we have left. You won't, you know, we have a situation in the UK where you can actually be arrested for saying something online. And this, when we're talking about 2006, 2007, this was happening. At this point, the entire conversation has been shut down. There is only word of mouth left. And and uh, and of course, that get, gets more difficult as uh, as time goes forward. I mean, not only uh, as you mentioned. I mean, people actually get prosecuted for for talking about shit. And you know, I I had a, a thing not so long ago. We had a uh, there was a bill before the New Hampshire legislature talking about. Uh, Free speech on college campuses. Now, as, as uh, you guys are probably aware, we've had a lot of problems with the universities here in the States with uh, people saying, you know, uh, trying to ban racism or whatever the fuck. Um, and so uh, there was a there's a bill before the New Hampshire legislature here which said, uh, OK, we're going to protect free speech on the college campuses. And I went to them and I said, you know what, that sounds like a good idea and all. But maybe the idea should be to start fucking censoring these left wing groups when people go out and say, uh, all right, we need to ban hate speech. We need to ban this. And, and they're promoting communist propaganda. Uh, I'm sort of getting to a point, and I'm really interested for your take on this, Jim, of saying, you know, if there's going to be if we're if we're going to enter into the realm of uh, somebody's got to get censored here, that's the that's the ball that's in play. How do you feel about uh, uh, rules on, say, a state university campus that would say you're going to promote, uh, you know, radical feminism, you're going to promote rape culture, you're going to promote, uh, you know, communist fucking shit? Uh, we're going to kick you out of fucking school. Well, uh, do you want to you know, go the, first? The, yeah. Oh, sorry. Do you want to uh, go, yeah. go first yeah. on this, Jim? <laughs> I don't know, Savage. Go, Jim. What, what are your thoughts I want on Jim's it? take on it. We'll get you in a minute, Savage. Go, Jim. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's it. the ideology of the people in power that's going to be the accepted ideology. So I, the reason you're seeing this on a lot of college campuses where they can say these really left-leaning statements and not get any kind of pushback, but if you say something that's a little more conservative or something that is – well, let's be honest right now, right wing and conservative is a counterculture, you're going to be punished. Uh, they have trigger warnings on syllabi, they have safe spaces, they want to enforce speech codes, they want to drill out people that disagree with them. And uh, I mean, you, you want an example of how crazy this has gotten? I can give you the absolute um, 
perfect example of. There is a uh, Twitter account called OU Against Harassment. Um, it's at Speak Up OU. And this was set up by college students at an Ohio university that basically if anybody is accused of any kind of um, sexual proclivity, if, if they, you know, somebody says, oh, they're sexually abusive, they have to have no proof of it whatsoever, these people will post their information publicly and try to shame them publicly. The college is aware of it. The college has done nothing to stop it. So it, it's, you have these kind of tactics that are endorsed by school officials, by these radicals, and it's not even official policy, but there's no pushback against it. This is basically an open platform for doxing students that they disagree with who have been accused of something and nothing has been proven. And meanwhile, they, there was just uh, the, the right stuff. Biz is a, a, a bunch of guys who I think are, are very uh, informative and entertaining, uh, uh, not not shy about discussing racial topics, shall we say. They just had their uh, their web hosting get yanked because uh, somebody posted the, somebody's personal information on their forum and they got the fucking plank pulled out from under them. Right. And while these people can still flourish, uh, the Twitter account, that is. And it's ridiculous to me. These college officials are aware of it. They know what's going on. They don't do anything. It's similar to what happened with, um, God, what is it, Emma, uh, Mattress Girl, where oh, she basically ruined this man's life, accused him of things that turned out not to be true. The press went along with it. The school went along with it. Social media went along with it. And it ruined him, destroyed him. And it turns out completely to be a false allegation. There's no merit to it. His life is ruined. It's in tatters. Where's the pushback against that? Look at what happened with the Duke lacrosse case. You had the, was it the letter of 44, where all these administrators and all these school officials, uh, officials wrote a letter condemning the Duke lacrosse team, saying that they are guilty, they should be expelled from school, they should be shunned, and then it turned out to be completely false. But they never retracted the letter they wrote. There was never uh, any, nobody got fired, nobody got put on suspension, nobody had to make a public apology. It's, it's insane what's going on on college campuses. It happens and all the time, is, and I mean, that's why I sort of, like, was, I was originally sympathetic to, as we talked about earlier, DNS may, you know, it's like, okay, yes, false rape accusations happen, um, but of course, uh, I don't know, this is a completely different subject, I'm off topic, sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Oh, it's interrelated. I, I know where you're going with it, but yeah, it, college campuses are shit right now. I would hate to be a university student at the moment. I would feel unsafe. I would feel unsafe to speak my mind. I would feel unsafe to date. Um, I'd want to have a camera on me all the time. I'd have consent forms on me all the time. I'd have to have a fucking witness when I go on a date in case I might kiss somebody because I don't want to be accused of something and then socially shunned yeah, and have just, the administration. I was just saying the it. other night, I mean, you know, on, on college campuses, you're a fucking, you're, you know, you're a well-to-do, uh, white male student on a college campus and you're getting shoved into a consent class. And then over in, uh, over in Europe now we've got, uh, you know, rape fugees running fucking rampant and they get, uh, what, what, there was the one girl had to sign out there. I think that more than one, but I remember this meme going around on Twitter of this girl saying, we'll trade rapists for racists. I mean, it, that's literally what it's what it's come down to is that they're like, well, you know, uh, if there, somebody's going to go fuck a woman against their will, that's fine. But we don't want nothing of that crime think around here. Right. Wrong think is the thing they need to exterminate. That's what they really dislike. All right. Savage Pleb, wrap it up. Uh, well, I mean, I had more points, but if you need to. Yeah, I know. But we got other callers. It's a two hour yeah, program. Yeah, top of this. Um, yeah. So I suppose my uh, ending point on this would be, I think at this point, really, you see a lot of people, and I know a lot of people who share not necessarily similar views to here. A lot of the people are a bit more left, but they aren't of the social justice view mindset. They are not of this mindset of all the refugees are great or white people are evil. A lot of people are actually a lot more red pilled, so to speak, on what the reality is. However, there is no platform for anybody to speak about these things. Like I said, even the word of mouth is being taken away from people. All right, I think so what you're going to find over is that you're going to find answer. eventually this is going to. This is going to boil over to a point where really it's going to culminate in something like a Trump happening in Europe. Well, I, I, I certainly think that you're going to see that. I mean, that's what you almost saw in France with Marine Le Pen. Right. I mean, you see these uh, these, uh, uh, you know, nationalist parties uh, uh, gaining gaining traction over there because the, the left is so completely out of control. But I mean, the, to the point, uh, I'll keep you on a little longer because you tried to say something that that I'm interested to talk about. Uh, you said there, there are people who are, shall we say, left leaning who are not that reality detached. I mean, uh, I, I wonder if that's even fucking possible, because, I mean, even even with these so-called right wing groups and even with these so-called right wing European parties, I mean, these people have lunatic 
fucking economic agendas. And this is part of what troubles me about the Donald Trump campaign. He is not, you know, it, it troubles me about the conservative movement. I'm a right wing guy. And I believe that you should have a fucking uh, uh, I think that you could do away with government altogether. But to the extent that you're going to have one, it should uh, it should limit its fucking purposes to, uh, you know, maintaining a certain semblance of order. And you've got these, uh, you know, these generous social welfare programs. And I mean, Trump is sort of from this like Buchananite camp that says, OK, we're going to have these, you know, traditional values or whatever. But we're going to, and we're going to have our nationalist pride, but we're going to have all these social welfare programs at the same time and they don't fucking work i mean the 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 it, it, you're you're setting all of the incentives against the productive behaviors that that would uh, heal your fucking society and then you're expecting your society to flourish anyway yes i understand that is very difficult in the mindset especially when dealing with the left to try and separate the economic issues from the political issues as a wide whole um, what I suppose I would say was on the issue of people being kind of left and not that far left or the social justice mindset. You've got to realise the left wing is essentially the entire political spectrum in the United Kingdom. There is a very, very small right wing spectrum across it's in Europe as a whole. So the kind of left wing spectrum as a, as a whole is stretched out, so to speak. So there's a lot more volume across it because people get hit. They get so far into the left, they get really crazy that, you know, People who are into the left but not that left kind of seem more reasonable, I suppose, as leftists from a European point of view, because I mean, we don't have that kind of spectrum of right wing. Um, what I would say is that when we talk about more sort of realistic left wing people, we mean people who realise that there is a problem when you bring in people of vastly different cultures into one country and expect them all to just get along. And then you say, well, no, no, you don't need to get along. You can just do whatever you want that doesn't work. At the same time, these people would still believe in more socialist economic views. They would still maybe believe that, no, no, we can't, we can't believe, you know, we can't say that women and men are different, you know, we've got to let women fight in the army, this kind of thing. But they don't believe in this really radical idealism of whites have to be destroyed, is I suppose how we'll sum it up. Any, anything you got, Jim, you got anything for uh, Pleb before I let him go? No. no all I right, think all right. So, uh, you know, my, my thing... I, and, and maybe I, I haven't talked to you about economics at all. I mean, I have a couple of stories bookmarked here about what's going on in Europe uh, with with the economy. I mean, the Greece, the Greek stock market tanked today, and this is this ominous warning for the rest of Europe. And I wonder, do you do you do you have do you have do you, are you a student at economics at all? Do you do you get into this stuff at all? Well, I am. I'm everybody on the internet is a student of everything. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, as far as my knowledge of economics, it's pretty poor. Uh, the thing I've been most interested in would be the Canadian dollar versus the American dollar. I know Trudeau was at a uh, international economics forum. Instead of talking about his economy, he talked to them about feminism. Of so course. that's mind blowing to me when you've, when you've got the situation that's going on in Canada right now, when he's doing that rather than addressing the needs of his own country. Well, uh, it's kind of surreal. And this is I, and I and I'm convinced, you know, um and it's and it's troubling to me because I mean uh, this this program before we started getting into uh before the the identity politics really became the headline of every fucking topic that came up. I mean, we'd talk about economics and stuff like that, which you know, I think to be generally of far greater consequence, but unfortunately, these things have dominated all of the fucking news. Everything is feminism. Everything is race. Everything's a goddamn culture war, and so that has become, you know, the the, the primary topic of discussion. But you know, uh, I mean, these things are incentives that that are are brought into the society, and they become fucking hostile towards uh, uh, reality attached, you know, uh, people, you know, businessmen and uh, people who need to make like rational economic calculations. Uh, everything is being made uh, hostile towards that. And it's driving all of the goddamn uh, incentives towards uh, towards all types of shit. Dark side Phil says that he is uh, that he has fixed whatever fucking problem he had. So let's give him another. He fixed shot. that leg. OK, perfect. Let's, let's uh, find out if uh, if he actually pulled it off. Dark side Phil, you're on the radical agenda. What's your agenda? Hello. Yeah, hello. Hel hello, Phil. Hey, you go, man. Your audio How's is shit. Going? Make your point quickly because your audio sucks. Hello, everyone. I'm Dark Side Phil, or DSP for short. Uh, I myself am a former pro fighting game player. All right, whatever the fuck he's doing, I don't have any goddamn time for it. So I think he's man. raising money for gout. That's what I understand that Phil does in his spare time. So yeah, it's one of those... Uh, one of those internet moments. Okay, all right. Well, thank you very much, Phil, for your attempt to be entertaining. It was a miserable failure, but it was a valiant try. Quinn, you're on the Radical Agenda. What's your agenda? I'm 
back, uh, not to your show, uh, to Jim's. Hello, Quinn. I was the one that my dad interrupted. I was oh, yeah, the, uh, the, the Sanders supporter whose father's a Trump supporter. I'm not a Sanders supporter. I'm Good, a Sanders you, supporter. Because if you Ooh, were, no, I'd have told you to jump off a fucking building. <laughs> so you were supporting oh, Rand, Rand Paul? Paul? I'm sorry, that's right. Yeah, you were a Rand guy? Uh, I was a Rand guy. Yeah, it's How's a little late for that. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, Chris. On with it, motherfucker! Say something! <laughs> Convince me to vote. Well, uh, why should I support Donald Trump over Ted Cruz? Because leftists need to go to bed with tear soaked fucking pillows until they drown in their sleep. That's why. I want people to be so fucking uncomfortable that they kill themselves. That's what I want from leftists. <laughs> I want Donald Trump to go into the White House and say politically incorrect things until leftists flee the United States of America. Let all the fucking liberals go over to Europe and fucking breed with their cucks and all the right wing Europeans can come over to the United States and specifically New Hampshire. Come over to New Hampshire, right wing Europeans. We'll build a fucking wall across the Massachusetts border. We'll kick all the fucking liberals out of here. Everybody with a Bernie Sanders sign will throw them out of a fucking helicopter and then we'll have a fucking prosperous society. My point right now, the point that I'm at, listen, like I said, with Donald Trump, uh, not, not, you know, the greatest of economic libertarians. He was just, uh, you know, on the debate the other night, he said, we're not going to have people dying in the streets. Everybody's got to be covered. And I'm like, I'll send you Henry Hazlitt's economics in one lesson, you stupid bastard. But he is making the left fucking cry. And that is the greatest thing in the world because these people, I'm convinced these people need to be fucking executed. But if somebody can at least make them uncomfortable, that's, uh, that's, that's where I'm at. All right. All right. So we don't make a uh, fucking environment that's wholly hostile to liberals, and that that is why I support Donald Trump over everything. There's another there's another thing on my website. You go to ChristopherCantwell.com, and I think it's episode 94 of the program. I talked about it at great length during the show, but I also wrote like 2,000 words on 2,000 plus words on the libertarian case for Donald Trump. I'd encourage you to go check that out, uh, and I and I thank you very much for for uh, for the uh, for the call there. Um, Two one eight. Yeah, no, sorry, don't, don't sorry, call. sorry about that. Yeah, he was on uh, Metalcast uh, a couple of weeks ago with his father, and um, <laughs> he he backed the wrong ticket. He backed uh, Rand, and his dad went with Trump, and you can see how that worked out. Well, you know, I can I can sympathize with people who liked Rand Paul. I mean, when I came into uh, when when the primary season was starting up, I had sort of given up on the electoral politics thing. But if I was going to support a candidate, I figured it would have been Rand Paul. I I want I was a volunteer for his father in twenty twelve. Uh, but you know, Rand, as I've said on previous episodes, you know, he tried to, he tried to play footsie with the Warhawks. He threw, he threw fucking red meat to the social justice war and he completely alienated his father's base. And he just thought, oh, well, nepotism's all the rage these days. Just look at Jeb. And so I'll just have all of these people come support me because my last name is Paul. And it didn't fucking pan out that way. So, uh, he, he squandered his opportunity to be president of the United States. If he had come in there and wanted to kick the goddamn door down, uh, I'd, uh, I'd have been on board too. But we got a, a boisterous, openly racist billionaire instead. And fine, let's do that. Whoever's going to make the fucking left uncomfortable, great. And unfortunately, uh, Rand Paul tried to rub their dicks under the table and it didn't pan out very well, did it? No, it did not. He, uh, he did not get very far. <laughs> You know, and it's a shame. You know, it's so funny to me. You know, I'm in New Hampshire is a is a there's it's home to a political migration known as the Free State Project. And and they just uh, we talked about on a recent episode that they just crossed this goal of 20,000 people who have pledged to move here uh, to, you know, get involved in politics or activism or whatever and try to, you know, reduce the role of government in our lives. And a lot of these people were Rand Paul volunteers and he didn't even make it to the New Hampshire primary. Uh, and, and this is, this is what has happened. You know, this is a problem, especially in libertarianism that like you, you've had this, this effort to sort of like, just go play footsie with leftists and shit and all these different ideologues of uh, different varieties. And it does not work. It does not get, grant you any advantage whatsoever because they will always, the leftists will always go to their fucking Bernie Sanders and their fucking Hillary Clinton. They're not going to try to advance libertarian causes. They, they are not, you know, going to become small government people because you 
pander to their fucking ridiculous egalitarian narratives of, oh, yeah, women are the same as men, and, and it's this terrible white cis heteropatriarchy oppressing the black man. It has nothing to do with Michael Brown robbing a fucking convenience store. It has nothing to do with Trayvon Martin trying to attack the fucking neighborhood watch. No, no, no. It's all just white racism, and people run with those fucking narratives, and they wonder why it does not pan out for them. It's fucking ridiculous. Now, I'm confused. Why aren't you voting for free shit 2016? I thought Sanders was going to give everybody everything they wanted, right? That's the perfect solution. Free health care, free college, free money, right? I, that sounds fantastic. What could go wrong with that? Well, exactly, you know, and this is this is the that is the fucking economic reasoning of the majority of the population, and it's and it's fucking scary to me because, of course, uh, I mean, I I think that we talked. I don't know. I think you said you hadn't watched the last Democratic debate, but it was hysterical to watch Hillary Clinton trying to be the voice of reason, Jim. Okay, Hillary Clinton not good at being the voice of reason, sir. Okay, she's trying to be the moderate on this stage with this communist lunatic who's like free health care, free education, free ponies for children oh that's vermin supreme but he's a more realistic <laughs> candidate at this point but you know but it, it's a you know it, 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 the whole democratic party thing has been like who's going to give away more it goes from health care to education to a hand job and you're like what the fuck are you people doing and you've got hillary clinton up on that stage saying like bernie the math doesn't add up and she's losing the election she bernie's polling ahead of her in new hampshire by far and they're now in a dead heat neck and neck the the iowa caucuses were she literally won them by six coin tosses and she's realizing like oh my god mathematics is no longer part of the debate on the on the on the on the democratic party i'm trying to put insert economic reasoning into this and these people have completely lost all sense of that yeah the only portion that i watched of it <clears throat> and what i found interesting was clinton seemed to keep hitting sanders she would be on point at least to a degree and she'd kind of put jabs in here and there but sanders wouldn't respond and I think that, you know, I, I was almost 100 percent sure that Sanders was going to take their nomination process and that something dark from uh, Hillary's past was going to come up, probably related to the sexual proclivities of Bill, that was going to hurt her and make her campaign implode. But Sanders won't hit back. I don't want to talk about the email scandal. I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to you know insult you. He's going to malady himself right out of the nomination process. And it's, it's remarkable to me that even with that, he still holds the kind of audience that he does. I guess they really just want free shit. And since he's up there offering it to them, they're going to vote for him no matter what. Yeah, so I don't know what she can do to get, to get people to go, wait a minute, we can't give everybody everything there is because that has to come from somewhere. So somebody's going to be losing something in the process. Yeah, she um, he has gone after her just a little bit about the emails, but then he tries to bring it back. Like, he's trying to run this campaign and saying, oh, well, we're going to do things differently this time. I've never run a negative ad, blah, 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 blah. But he did, like, in the uh, before the Iowa caucuses, he was running an ad not directly about Hillary Clinton, but about all these politicians who have been taking money from Goldman Sachs or whatever, which is an obvious uh, she's, you know, gotten hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars from Golden, Goldman Sachs in speaking fees. And now she's like, oh, well, I'll look into whether or not I'm going to release these transcripts. Oh, that of these dodge speakers. of an answer where yeah. she's like, I'll look into it. Yeah. Not a yes or no, Hillary. Yeah, exactly. She does not want those fucking speeches out there. And I mean, you know, her 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 basic like her her biggest point right now, like the biggest thing that she's got going for her is is like I suspect I probably won't be indicted. <laughs> like that's that's what passes, know, right? <laughs> that's what passes for like you know good goodness in the Democratic Party is like I think the indictments are less than likely. Elect me president of the United States. And it's like really like you you the Democratic Party right now is trying to choose between a communist and a felon, and they seem to be having a really difficult time uh, uh, figuring it out. And it's and it's absolutely fucking hysterical to watch. Right, without O'Malley now up on the stage. It's going to be interesting watching these two interact because they don't have that buffer of some guy that's not going to get any votes. So they have to directly interact with each other now. So I don't know if Sanders is going to stick with the, uh, oh, uh, I love you, Hillary. Let's be nice to each other thing for too long because I think she's going to start coming after him, like really, really coming after him and explaining to people in detail why his economic policies 
are batshit crazy. But I don't know how she can do that, right? Because if she explains why his economic policies are crazy, then she'll have to blow her own policies out of the water. That's what I thought was so interesting about the last debate. She's up there saying the math doesn't add up when you want to give everybody free education. But then again, like the math doesn't add up for anything that the United States federal government is doing. I mean, the, the national debt, I think, just crossed 19 trillion. Uh, the, 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 they're talking about they're going to balance the budget in 20 fucking years or something like that. And it's like, look, you can't borrow money in Definitely. We've seen this happen in Greece and everywhere else. The math doesn't add up for any of this crap. Right. But I, I think what's going to happen is you're right. Neither of them really makes sense. But she is far less crazy than Sanders is. And I, if she has to get up there with, uh, you know, with a diagram and draw pictures for the audience to explain <laughs> to them why $15 an hour free everything isn't going to work then she might just end up doing that. But I expect blood to be uh, shed in the next couple of uh, meetings between the two. I don't think this let's be nice to each other thing. I think really what you're seeing on the Democratic side is they hate Trump so much, they don't want to argue with each other because they don't want any comparisons to his techniques at a debate. But I don't think they can keep trying to play nice like they are. They're going to have to start getting serious. Oh, they they, they definitely are. I mean, it's uh, and, and I mean, you saw that a little bit in the last debate. I'm looking forward. I don't know how many more of them they're going to they're going to have lined up. But I, I hope that we see some more of them. I know they they schedule far fewer debates in the Republican Party. And I guess there's good reason for that, having so so many fewer candidates than the Republicans. But uh, I, I just want to see them because, I mean, the, every every debate up until the last one has been really pussyfooting. They did start sort of tangling with each other at the previous one and you know as things go on they're gonna have to draw blood and it's gonna be it's gonna be fucking fantastic to watch let's bring uh let's bring david on the line david's been waiting on skype here um <clears throat> david 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 going once uh david you're on the radical agenda what's your agenda Man, up in this hole you gotta be watch fucking me. kidding what? me jesus christ uh, guys, <laughs> that, that was, uh, David, the, uh, executive producer of Moon Man Records, I believe, was that, that's, that's who that was. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, uh, you're gonna get inundated, so enjoy it. Okay, let's try, uh, let's try, uh, John Cena. Oh, we have a celebrity guest, I suppose. John Cena, you're on the Radical Agenda, what's your agenda? Are you fucking kidding me, really? You guys are going to, like... I don't understand. Do, do you understand why people you, you do that? You right into that one. His name was John Cena. How did you not see that coming? I mean, people have all sorts of stupid names on Skype, and I'm not and I'm not necessarily, like, uh, surprised by that. Uh, but you think that, like, they're going to call in and... I mean, I, like, a prank is one thing, right? Like, call in and prank me. Go and say something funny. It's great for the audience. I don't I don't mind that in the slightest. But what what do you think that you're, um, you're, you're going to do? Uh, just play fucking music and I'm going to keep you on the, did, did you it contribute something? Are you enjoying yourself? Because it doesn't, it doesn't add anything to uh, the program. You're not gaining any recognition for that. I don't understand the, uh, the purpose of it. So uh, radical agenda on Skype. If you'd like to be on the program, Mal roadkill, you're on the radical agenda. What's your agenda? And of course, another fucking loser who can't figure out his Skype. All right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's off the fucking, uh, it's off the fucking hook today. Uh, Tino is, says he's got his shit straightened out. We'll try him one more time, and then I'm gonna, you know, uh, this is fucking ridiculous. Tino, you're on the radical agenda. You better have it fucking worked hey, out. Hey, I am fucking ready. All right, so get on with it then. Okay, but wait a minute. The fucking, you're, you're coming through here. God damn it. Listen, what's up, man? I gotta mute your fucking thing over here. Okay, Yo, now. Dude, I'm, are you fucking hello. kidding me? Get on with I'm, it. I'm here. I'm ready. I'm ready. Hello. Yeah. Okay, so what's up, man? What do you want to talk about? Are you fucking kidding me, you stupid bastard? <laughs> I mean, come on, people. Jesus Christ. All right. Um, all right. You've got a hell of an audience, Chris. Are these these people, you know, incompetent motherfuckers. You people are supposed to fucking help me, okay? This program is not here. This is not fucking counseling, okay? This is not Miss Cleo's fucking psychic hotline where you call in and I fucking deal with your bullshit. That's not the way this fucking works. You call in, you make the program better, or I hang up on you and I fucking block you, all right? Get it the fuck together and, and, and go, go call into the fucking Sirius XM Patriot channel. See how much they tolerate with your bullshit. I'm extraordinarily fucking tolerant. I I bring all you fucking assholes in here and uh you know and i try to i try to fucking give you a moment to be heard and speak to the internet aristocracy here of myself and uh mr mediker uh but uh you know you guys you guys just can't seem to fucking get it straight let's try uh dio dio is on uh on skype dio you're on the radical agenda what's your agenda Jesus fucking Christ, these <laughs> stupid bastards all over the place. You know, I'm going to stop taking fucking calls if you people are going to do this to me. Um, let's try, uh, 
You want to you do Black History Month with me real quick, Jim? Sure. Yeah, okay, let's, do, let's do Black History Month. Uh, Black History Month, a very important time of year, ladies and gentlemen. Every every February, we go through and you know sort of honor the accomplishments of, uh, of peoples descended from uh, the uh, uh, the sub-Saharan Africa, and they 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 uh, all the contributions that they've made to our society. You know, like inventing peanut butter. That's like the only thing I can think of. The George Washington Carver guy. But uh, the, but I have uh, we've been doing on. Um, radical agenda here. We've gone through uh, some some of the uh, shall we say lesser accomplishments of the African American community, and we have here uh, there's there's a woman who was very excited when Barack Obama got elected, and let's hear uh, let's hear the news clip from uh, from from when she uh, was so happy about this. Peggy Joseph took her daughter out of school early Wednesday for this. Her emotions ran high following Obama's speech. It was the most memorable time of my life. I. I it was a touching moment because I never thought this day would ever happen. I won't have to worry about putting gas in my car. I won't have to worry about paying my mortgage. You know, <laughs> if I help him, he's going to help me. I won't have to worry about putting gas in my car. I won't have to worry about paying my mortgage. If I help him, he's going to help me. I mean, this is one of the shorter clips that we've played for this, but I I still think it's fucking priceless, and it's the perfect image of all of these people who just got so excited about Barack Obama's presidency. Uh, yeah, that's I, I actually did a video uh, for Black History Month uh, looking at some of the famous black people throughout uh, history. You might be surprised. Did you know that Mozart and Beethoven were both black? No, that's uh, that sounds like social justice warrior. We was no, 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 no. I swear to you. Also, uh, King George of England was black. Henry the Eighth was black. Shakespeare as well was black. The Vikings, the Egyptians, black. Uh, Japanese and Chinese, they were black <laughs> as well. I, I'm not. Uh, do you know where you come from? Uh, you're now. You're. Oh, we're, white guy, we're all right? out of I, Africa. Is the theory behind that, right? Oh no, 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 no. That that's the story they want you to believe. No, the truth is, and this is I've learned this from the Nation of Islam. We were actually all created by a black guy, a big-headed scientist by the name of Yakub. We we are cave dwellers. Did you know that? Well, I've I, I I've heard many theories where we all uh, used to dwell in caves. Yes, I have heard that, but uh, the Makub guy I don't know about. Or Yakub. No, yeah, Yakub. Yeah, Yacoub. we were a science experiment gone wrong. That that was the uh, the great truth that was revealed to me. And well, with how fucking all the tragic human society has turned out, that doesn't surprise me that we were a big accident and a tragic mistake. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Continue your point. No, no, no. It's the historical revisionism is really ridiculous at this point. It started off a little bit with uh, Afro, uh, oh God, what the hell would they call Afro it? Afro centricity. Yeah, centricity. But it, it's really taken off to the point where they're kind of integrating things you'll see in groups like Black Israelites or Nation of Islam that basically is rewriting all the history books. Everybody is black now. All accomplishments are black. The Egyptians were black and they had spaceships. <laughs> Jews are actually black. The people in Israel are imposters. I, apparently, this is what I found out from the black Israelites, that the real Jews are black people, Latinos, and Native Americans. That blew my mind. I had no idea that that was the real truth of the world. Well, but it, it, it's, it's gotten to ridiculous proportions where you're seeing this spread online. They'll talk about Amelia Bassano was the black woman that actually wrote Shakespeare's plays. Or how the first president of the United States wasn't George Washington. It was actually John Hanson, a Moor man. And they have a picture of him, even though photography wasn't invented until 40 years after he died, <laughs> I got um, you know one of the things that uh, I have to thank you for. Actually, I mentioned at the beginning of the program you had this uh, this uh, this uh, spiel you went on about um, uh, uh, explaining social justice warriors, right? What is, what is an SJW? And you mentioned Alan Sokol, the Sokol affair, and the science wars. And I it it compelled me. I went, I looked into that, and that compelled me to read um, Higher Superstition. Have you read that book? Uh, no, I haven't. But so dude, the, the, the self revolving around Sokol is fantastic. Oh yeah, that that story was fantastic. And so I I went uh, I ended up reading it, and he talked. He's got chapters on this whole Afrocentrism thing, where he's talking about just the, just what you were saying. That like they say, okay, you know, uh, they're trying to equate North Africans with blacks, and so all of the accomplishments of the Egyptians, right, uh, are are black accomplishments, and they go into all types of crazy things that Sub-Saharan Africans were in America before the Vikings and all of this crap but you're talking about uh them, them saying that um that a black scientist what created humanity or something it's this weird fusion that's going on of all these different extremist groups but they're they're starting to break mainstream or mainstream and getting absorbed in this uh, idea of afro uh, centrism so i've heard people make the argument that um you know, middle american tribes uh groups like the aztecs and the incas were actually african you know the egyptians yeah. were african 
uh, the Jews are African. Japanese and Chinese are African. Uh, Europeans uh, in the Middle Ages were actually black people. And they believe it. And they, you know, they propagate this nonsense. And then if you, if you make fun of it, if you poke at it, suddenly you're a horrible racist for saying this is insane. What are you talking about? We was kings, man. We was kings. This is where they That's, that's right. We, we was kings. That's, that's exactly the mentality. But they believe it. And this is the crap that's getting spread now. And it just it blows my mind that anybody buys into it. It is. It's it's completely off the wall. Let's uh, let's let's bring Stephen. Uh, Stephen is on Skype here. Stephen going once. Stephen going twice. Uh, you guys, when you, uh, Stephen, you're on the radical agenda. What's your agenda? Hey there. I gotta turn you off here. Yeah, you do. And maybe you do that uh, before you answer, and then you actually participate in the program instead of okay, preparing it's, on the it's, fucking it's, air. It's oh. off. Hey, um, do it. I, uh, okay, I just figured out what... Okay, I'm not going to do anything stupid. You know, I've been uh, paying attention to you lately, and you've been talking about monarchy, and I was wondering, you know, this is just bizarro shit to me. I mean, I, I, I support the idea of a meritocracy or maybe an aristocracy, but I can't figure this monarchy shit out. Well, the, 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 what I'm getting at in terms of monarchy, it's not something that, like, I'm like, I can't wait to bow before a king. I'm just saying that it would be better than democracy, okay? So, uh, you know, it seems well, to I, me I don't, that people are I, not— I don't agree that that's historically valid. I mean, all the history of the world is full of monarchies starting wars and creating standing armies. That right, because, you know, Biz, democracies Bismarck, have not been known you know, for Bismarck the same created behavior. the welfare state under a monarchy? A welfare Excuse state me. under a monarchy? Yeah, Bismarck with the Prussian King of Prussia and all that. Okay. They created the modern welfare state. Uh, I don't think they created the modern welfare state. They might have given oh, yeah. a few bucks to the yeah, poor, yeah. but the modern welfare state is wholly the, 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 in the realm of democracy, okay? Uh, basically, no, no, since no, World no, War no, that's, One, that's not correct. That's not correct. They created Social Security and, and labor laws and all that stuff that was imitated by the uh, New Deal. Well, I, I'm I'm sorry, I don't have the uh, the history of this uh, this country that you're talking about handy in front of me. I'm I'm going by, the Empire uh, of uh, Germany. You got to You can't yeah. talk over the host of the show. Uh, so I read uh, uh, Hans Hermann Hoppe's "The Democracy the God That Failed," and he and I would encourage everybody to check the book out. And the case that he makes is that uh, the conversion from monarchy to democracy was uh, a decline in mankind's. Uh, path on civilization that that we've sort of uh, made this you know the, the the king the monarch had an interest in the capital stock of his realm uh, whereas it, because he can sell it he can pass it on to heirs and that sort of thing what we have with uh, the the under democratic government is the rulers of the the kingdom as it were uh, don't have that same interest they only have the usage of their power for a limited period of time so they sort of want to get out of it all that they can in as short a t period of time as possible because they're going to be out of office in a little while, whereas the king had an interest in sort of uh, uh, maintaining the, the capital stock of the realm. That's my okay. case. Okay, okay. So this is what's wrong with that argument is you left out the part about a republic and the rule of law. And that, How's that in, between, the United in between medieval kings being in there and a modern democracy, we had a constitutional republic. Yeah, uh, well, that's the theory. <laughs> that's the theory behind it, anyway. But it didn't really pan out so well. I mean, the 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 trend is towards universal suffrage. I mean, uh, we were, you know, we talked on here. Uh, yeah, you had the United States of America, and for a period of time, all you could have was, you know, white uh, property-owning males voting. And then uh, they're like, hey, you know, this slavery thing's not so hot. Let's let the slaves go. And then they're like, well, you know, they we got to make them our equals, so let's let them vote. And then a little while later, they get around to letting women vote, and then things get really bad. Okay, yeah, that's correct. But the conflict that w was created because of the failure of the Federalists to create a stable republic, you know, a stable aristocratic republic. It was The idea was supposed to be that the Federal Republic would be represented by state politicians, and that got undermined, you know, of course, at the state level when they started the one-man, one-vote thing. Well, I mean, and uh, my, my, my observation here would be that the tendency is always towards trying to appeal to the greatest number of people. That's that's how it like a, a, whether you call it a republic or not, you know, a government is either elected or unelected. Those are your two options. Right. Yeah. And so once you start electing your governments, they're going to try to start expanding their client base like any other business. Uh, so there's no reason to you don't even have to assume anything, um, you know, suspicious about what they're doing. There's nothing but self interest 
interest is assumed when you say that they're just going to get worse and worse and worse. You're going to try to. That's 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 true. A democratic republic. And I agree with that, what you just said. But there's other forms of a republic like, you know, a one party state like China has. That's a republic, even if their rule of law is maybe a little shaky, you know, but and it's a new thing for them since they got rid of the Maoists. But there's other ways of organizing a republic. Well, yeah, it I doesn't mean, have to be a democratic there's republic. all of these theories to how you're <laughs> going to fix the institution of the state, and it's and it's been a failure every fucking single time. Um, oh, well, that might be true, but uh, a king isn't going to be a success. That's all I'm pointing out. Well, uh, you could make I would make the case that no government is going to be successful, but you you can mitigate damage. What's uh, what's your take on all this, there, Jim? I'm just enjoying the chat's take on this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Here's my idea that. If we want to continue with the Federalist experiment where Hamilton, who's not really that much of a good guy, he's the mercantilist, but he wanted to create a, a um, aristocracy of wealth. And if we continue the experiment from that point of view, rather say like the reformed communists in China, I think it would be possible to create like a corporate system that has an interest in preserving itself instead of the corrupt one that we have now. And that I know saying you're for corporations is some is anathema in libertarian circles but you know it doesn't necessarily have to be a limited liability corporation but some kind of system that's organized by and for rich people who need customers you know us you know you can have you can have different levels of citizenship like rome had they had a basic level where you had civil rights to a, a fair trial then they they had the right to vote they had, you know, if you don't know about it, the Senate, they were drafted into the Senate if they were worth a certain amount of money. They had no choice but to serve in the Senate. So that kind of system can function without being a democratic republic. And I'm not saying we well, have to do it exactly what you were just like talking that. about is that people got the right to vote. And once, you, once people have the right to elect uh, the rulers of a society, then they are going to elect people who, you know, uh, unfortunately end up appealing to the lowest fucking common denominator. That's that's the inevitable okay. result of, of of a democratically elected government. And I thank you very much for the call. Do we have any uh, do we have any particular gems of wisdom there from the uh, from the chat, Jim? Uh, no, they were just talking about um, <laughs> what they are prone to talk about, which I don't think is related which to the is subject like, uh, at all. It's like cocks and feces and that sort of I, thing. I got uh, a little distracted, I'll be honest okay, with you. Okay, yes. all right. Let's bring, uh, let's bring Dan on the line. Dan's on Skype. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the the chat can uh, can certainly descend into chaos on a normal night, and I and I suspect that with uh, roughly four hundred more viewers than normal, uh, we're <laughs> probably uh, descending a little bit lower. I'm I'm gonna guess. Uh, Dan, uh, good guess. <laughs> trying for you, Dan, but uh, uh, da, 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 Dan going uh, twice, three times, and Dan, you're fucking done. Sorry, pal. Um, let's uh, let's bring. Uh, 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 so your previous caller, he was talking about what a corporatocracy. He so wants what, businesses what in charge. Yeah. So what I've I've gone into here before. Look, I'm I'm an anarcho capitalist. I don't believe that there should be a government. Period. Okay. And uh, maybe before we go into it, maybe I'll get your take on that. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to be very honest with you that the majority of people that I've met that claim to have any kind of an anarchist ideology don't usually present the best arguments for it. Uh, it usually breaks down uh, kind of at the uh, at the idea of okay, well. If you don't have kind of a group agreement on how things are going to be run, if you don't have a government that oversees laws and regulations, how do you protect yourself as a citizen from other citizens? Well, um, there's there's cases for that. And unfortunately, most of the people who would call themselves anarchists are not very good at explaining it. Uh, I imagine that this is done through insurance companies and that sort of thing. But perhaps uh, that's a, a little bit involved to uh, discuss on another time. Uh, Jesus Christ, Dan called me and I tried to bring him in and then he fucking lost his connection. Um, let's bring uh, James. James is on uh, James is on the radical agenda. James is on Skype. James going once. Uh, you know, the idea that the, the caller was talking about, though, is I said, OK, well, look, I don't think that we need a government period. We could do this thing with insurance companies and contracts and that sort of thing. But some people will make the case that a, a monarch, you know, did a better job than the democratically elected government. I would go so far as to say we've got a lot of evidence that democratically elected governments aren't working out so good. Uh, James, you're on the radical agenda. What's your agenda? Hey, uh, yeah, I'm calling you from Australia. So long distance well thanks um, for that yeah i want to talk to you guys about uh offshore processing about what offshore pro uh, processing of uh immigrants okay. okay yeah do it then 
Yeah, um, like our, our um, high court just had a case just before to uh, see if our constitution, sorry about this, uh, would still allow this, allow us to, you know, still process, you know, offshore and our constitution 100% allow this as long as it's, you know, humane and shit. What do you mean by processing? Through New Zealand or something? Or is this online? Or how is uh, that done? Uh, I believe we pay um, Indonesia to hold them. Why we uh, <laughs> to, to hold them? You send them to cages yeah, in Tonga yeah. or something? Yeah, pretty much. We pay them like a, a fair bit of money to fucking just hold these shitheads. And we have our own little islands around Australia. Well, we also hold these shitheads. Most not, not all of them, you know. But uh, I was just wondering what the fuck can't America, you know, try and do this themselves? I say what America you know, can do is fucking say, get the fuck out of here, everybody. We're done. That's my idea. Yeah. That's, yeah, I mean, I know, but this, you know, no, you can send them all to fucking Hawaii or whatever, you know? You'd be like, look, Hawaii, you go deal with this crap, you know? Uh, but uh, yeah, like, at, 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 at the same time, it's like, uh, uh, I mean, look, we, we've got, uh, you know, we got enough people. We're good. Thanks. See ya. Fair enough. Have a good one. All right, you too. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, I'm not doing the, the the regular telephone thing tonight. So, uh, <laughs> radi radical agenda on Skype. If you'd like to be on the program, uh, Alex, Alex is on uh, on the Skype. There, he's been trying to get on. Uh, da -da 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 what do you, What do you think, Jim? Should we shut the fucking borders, or uh, you know, uh, make it a little more restrictive, or uh, just open border? What do you say? I think you can have sensible immigration, but you need to really reform the system. The way it's run right now with the visa programs and all the exceptions is ridiculous. There, there's no oversight. There's no security measures in place that are really being followed to the letter. Uh, you, like I said, you had government officials saying that, yeah, we're aware of people that are immigrating or immigrating that are coming from overseas. We're not checking them out like we should be checking them out. Well, what the hell's the point of you, you know, having you as an agency then if you're not actually doing your job? If we're going to have immigration, it needs to be sensible. There needs to be a system in place that is actually followed that people legally go through and that has a set standard of rule to it that is sensible. But the way it's run now is, oh, well, you know, I get on this visa and then I jump to another visa and then I get another visa and then I, I marry somebody. It's, it's just, it's ludicrous. Yeah. It's a joke of it's, a system. It is, it is, it is fucking completely ridiculous. And I mean, the, the, um, you know, what, what Trump has said, at least with the Muslims is like, okay, you know, we're going to shut it down until we figure out what the hell is going on. And I mean, that sounds like a pretty reasonable thing. Cause obviously people don't know what the fuck they're doing. So let's shut it down and then we'll figure it out. You know, uh, we'll figure it out later. Now they've got, you know, this whole Zika thing is going on in Brazil. We've got one sexually transmitted case in the United States already. And Barack Obama's like, I want $1.8 billion to fight this disease. And by the way, I'm going to do nothing to stop people from pouring in here with the goddamn disease. Well, it's it's already too late in the U.S. with the Zika virus. There have already been cases throughout the South uh, and the East. And hell, there was one case in Minnesota, which I'm sure is somebody that was overseas came back with it. The fact that it's sexually transmitted should terrify people with the, with the behavior and the kind of the modern morality. Nobody really gives a shit. You know what I mean? There's not uh, anything really scaring people into not uh, banging each other like rabbits. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, we've, maybe, got, yeah. we've got subsidized birth control and abortion. Why shouldn't I fucking go and uh, drag my pussy all over the place like a dog wiping <laughs> its ass on the carpet? You know, it's just fucking ridiculous. It never stops. Yeah, let me just go fucking stick my dick in everything that walks. Because, uh, you know, worst case scenario, I'll drop her fucking pregnant ass over at Planned Parenthood and she can have the thing ripped out of her. Yeah, pretty much. Thomas, you're on the radical agenda. What's your agenda? Hey, Chris. Uh, hey, so I'll, I'll make this brief. Uh, you know how you got forgiveness from uh, Walter Williams back in the day? Yeah, I've got uh, uh, the episode for... <laughs> of uh, Some Garbage Podcast. We were still calling it that at the time. I, I titled it Pardon My Racism. And I actually, you probably can't see it in the frame, but I've got my my uh, my uh, certificate of pardon from uh, the brilliant black economist Walter Williams is up on the uh, up on the wall there. Go ahead. All right, well, so from a Hispanic, uh, I don't know if I need to type it up, but at least I'll make it verbally uh, public. Uh, I forgive you for all your racism, not just from your uh, ancestors, but your ongoing racism, because uh, I'll probably be voting for Trump even if uh, even if he talks shit about us, because I don't have low self-esteem, so fuck them, right? I can live my life even if Trump thinks I'm shit, so I'm not going to be one of those sore losers crying out for for help and affirmative action. So 
Uh, if you find that to be a good attitude, well, you have my forgiveness. Well, well, thank you, Thomas. And, I, and I'll tell you, you know, I've, I've made mention before we have uh, for all of the uh, perceived racism and sexism and homophobia that is uh, we are accused of on this program. We do have a number of uh, listeners who do not fall into my uh, my outlook of the uh, from the white cis heteropatriarchy. And uh, they are they are some wonderful people. And, and you seem to be one of them, sir. And look, uh, I am. Uh, I, I, and I think I think a lot of people concur with this that like look there are there are differences between fucking groups and these narratives that go around that the group differences don't exist they think that they're acting individualistic but they are really like hyper collectivist is really what it is you're saying that like I can't even tell the difference between these two groups of people then how the fuck are you supposed to tell the differences between individuals you know and so I'm I'm perfectly happy you know I was on Gavin McGinnis's show not so long ago right so I had gotten kicked off of Free Talk Live for talking about the race and IQ issue. Right. But if you look at it, if you look at the, you know, the bell curve of IQ and it's like, OK, yes, there are a lot of black people who are smarter than a lot of white people and whatever you can get into these things. So it doesn't it's not a reliable way of in, judging individuals, but it explains some of the demographic disparities that go on. And so these things are worth, you know, addressing, in my opinion. And I'm glad that, you know, some people like yourself have enough fucking intelligence to know that I'm not trying to malign you personally. Right. No. And uh, I think you, you touched on this point a while back that says you know, as it's it's human nature to look at, at those tendencies uh, because, you know, if you were out in the jungle and you say, well, I once met a lion and he was really nice, you're not just going to go feed raw meat to a lion because he's going to tear you apart because that's just their nature. So if there's nothing wrong with looking at, at groups and, 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 or I guess I, you could say cultures um, and what they tend to do. Uh, and uh, everyone who's smart enough to, to pick out the good individuals will do it. And if not, you know, the market will punish you for it. But, uh, but there's nothing wrong with looking at groups of people for, for those tendencies to save your own ass, to protect your own ass. Like, for example, to not hire a woman to be a, your bodyguard, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like, uh, and I mean, you can even take it further than that. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, there are no, there are no pit bulls, only dogs, right? Like, come on, you know, oh, because the fucking house cat drank fucking milk out of a platter. That means I'm going to go and put a bowl of milk in front of a lion. I mean, there are differences <laughs> between, you know, groups here. There are no, there are no woodpeckers, only birds. Like, come on, get the fuck out of here. You know, there are differences between groups. And it doesn't mean that, you know, uh, it has to be a fucking completely hostile thing. Uh, unfortunately... You know, it ends up being that way because, uh, you know, people try to stir up all this crap that if, if, if you acknowledge a difference, then you're a terrible person. But then you have these things like, well, I've got the story over at University of Connecticut. Connecticut. They're, they're going to create, you know, a segregated housing for fucking black uh, students. You know, and they're like, oh, wow, you know, these black students, sure enough, you know, they, they realize that they're different from the white students. And so they want to live separately. And that's just fantastic. And that's going to promote diversity and tolerance. And of course, if somebody had suggested, hey, you know, us white kids, we us white students, we're sick of these spooks. So we want our own housing. Well, then, you know what everybody's going to say to them. Right. So, I mean, if everybody just recognizes that there are differences between groups, they associate with each other when they see fit and they don't associate with each other when they don't, then I think that we're all going to get along a lot fucking better. But when these people are trying to put this, you know, bullshit over on us, you know, it, it creates a lot of fucking hostility. Yeah, no, they'll, they'll point out or they'll pretend that, you know, it's only racism as it's in, from their direction towards ours. Uh, but, you know, I, I called a few months ago, I guess two months ago or so. Uh, to basically tell you that I, I thought it was really stupid how you were saying nigger left and right because it, it just felt like it added no value to your argument. But, you know, I, that that whole uh, neo-reactionary thing is, is really starting to grow in me. Uh, for example, when, uh, when I saw that video from Adam Kokesh when he's uh, with his mother at the movies and he's just asking questions, being very polite, and then the black kids start like really like talking shit about his mom, uh, you know, his mom, uh, not just in general, but also like calling her a cracker and like your mom is so old, that bitch and blah blah. blah. And, you know, I, I wish Kokesh would have said "fuck you, nigger," like punch him in the head. You know, just it's it's that sort of reaction that not now I kind of see your point. Uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, it's it's that same mentality that you have right now that it's not enough to just say. Uh, look, we'll play by the rules that we want you to play by. No, now we're at the point where we have to oppress back. We have to fight back, right? 
Yeah, I mean, what what is what has happened? And I think um, uh, Jeff Deist or uh, Jeff Deist, I forget exactly how it's pronounced, but I've seen it spelt plenty of times. Uh, Jeff Deist at the Mises Institute. He just gave a, a talk um, about uh, socialist left versus the alt right. And one of the things he says, okay, you know, some people might say that they're racist, and what he says is that might be true. But a more charitable way of looking at it would be to say that identity politics is a two way street, and now we are going to assert ourselves. And, you know, what, what has happened, you know, on Twitter, what, what, if you're not familiar, Jim, what he's referring to, uh, to me saying nigger all the time is when I am dismissive of people on Twitter, I reply to them and I say, shut up, nigger, and I hang up on them. I, I mute them, right? Um, and, you know, because I get all these social justice warriors and I figure, you know, you want to piss off a social justice warrior, call him a nigger, right? And then, of course, he'll screen cap it and send it to all his friends and it's a great way to promote yourself. Um, <laughs> and so I've been doing this. And uh, and of course, it, it, it's upset a, a great many people. But I also think and uh, maybe maybe you could give me your opinion on this, Jim. If I say nigger indiscriminately, is it still racist? I think that <clears throat> the situation we find ourselves in right now, and again, this goes back to PC culture. I, I think what you're seeing with the emergence of the alt-right and people being more open in their speech and just saying whatever the hell they want is almost like so societal Tourette's. People have this tick where it's been suppressed for so long that you can't say certain things, that the moment that you finally discover that you can say whatever you want, you pretty much go full fucking tilt. Um, so you'll see a lot of people uh, saying whatever the hell they want. So you know, using nigger indiscriminately, saying whatever the fuck you want. Uh, I've never been one for self-censor. I, I think it's ridiculous. I think people are adult enough that they can handle a conversation. I, it, you know, as a white guy, I'm not going to fucking crumble into dust and cry if you call me a honky or a cracker or a cave dweller or whatever, you know, <laughs> racial term you want to drudge up. I, I think people are hypersensitive and I think it's suppressed free speech for a long time. And it's reached the point now where people are just, they just want to get it out. They just want to say whatever the fuck they want to say. And it, it comes off as shocking to a lot of people, but it, we're adults. Adults can have conversations. It's banter. If you can't handle banter, get the fuck off the internet. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 gone completely out of control. Uh, we're getting towards the end of the program, and I and I we have so many people on hold. We're not going to be able to get to all of you. Uh, Tom, you want to? You got anything else you want to get before to before we uh, before I hang up on you? Yeah, please. I, I came across a video. Uh, Tom Soul. The name is the name of the video is Culture Matters. Uh, it's really short. It's like only three minutes, but. Uh, man, you're gonna love that. Just just watch it. And, and as usual, uh, Walter Williams and Tom Sowell, they're not apologizing for uh, the behavior of black people. So in there, he at least breaks it down and, and separates race and culture. And uh, I think that was very informative. And of course, because he's black, you can't blame him. So he's free to say whatever you want. So uh, check it out. You're gonna love it. Yeah, I will. I mean, with the exception of uh, with the exception of Soul's uh, smashing of Trump on the pages of the National Review, uh, I think that his contributions to the conservative movement have been very valuable. And certainly Walter Williams, uh, a brilliant guy. Uh, those names uh, ring bells for you, Jim? Um, no, not off the top of my head. Okay. No. Well, uh, I like I said, I, I've been following the most recent political cycle. I've been following the debates a little bit. Um, I, yeah, I'm going to be honest with you, really, when it comes to politics or when it, when it's coming to the stuff that's going on right now. It's pretty much Trump that's captured my attention. And uh, God, what is the name of his PR woman, by the way? Uh, the woman that he keeps sending on to do different news interviews and she's destroying I know destroying exactly people. who you're talking about, but Katrina, I can't remember her. Katrina, Katrina something. Katrina, yeah. God, she is fantastic. That is the perfect person to have as a PR spokesperson for your campaign. She goes on to do these interviews. She makes news rec uh, reporters cry. And she just doesn't give a shit. And I love that attitude. And I think that appeals to a lot of people. It certainly does. I mean, like I said, you know, I came into this thing sort of if I was going to support a candidate, it would have been Rand Paul. But Donald Trump completely blew the doors down attacking the PC culture. And I think that that's so hugely, hugely important and not getting nearly enough, uh, not getting nearly enough traction in this society. If we let these fucking lunatics run with their narratives and nobody confronts them, they will fucking destroy us. Now, I'm going to take I, I, I'm going to take one more call. I know we're, we're, we're right at the end of the program, and I, I'm sure that uh, you have to piss as bad as I do. So let me <laughs> just let me just bring uh, let's bring uh, Brad. Brad is on uh, on the Skype. Series. See, I'm already seeing that Skype name. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're, you're familiar with this. Is he going to play music? No, no, so I'm I seeing up on the him? Skype name Dumbass. What do you, how do you think this is going to play out? <laughs> how do you think the Skype name Dumbass is going to play out on your show? Yeah. Um, all right. Sorry, Brad. Fuck you. Oh, no, you, you connected, actually. There you go, Brad. Yeah. You're on the Radical Agenda. Yeah. What's your agenda? Yeah, I just wanted to say that Obama is completely behind the immigration 
crisis and he should be charged for treason or something. Yeah, they should probably fucking hang him. Just All right. string him up from a fucking tree. Thank you very much for your help. <laughs> so. Oh come on! With a name, with a, with a Skype name like dumbass, he didn't drop a, a soundboard on us. I'm really disappointed. <laughs> I thought that was going somewhere completely different. So, uh, uh, Jim, uh, where do, where do people go to find out more about you, sir? Oh fucking nowhere. I'm just a guy on the internet. That's let's. <laughs> they can look. They can Google search Jim. That's how they can find me. Mister Mister Metaker. Uh, M E T O K U R. Right. That's like, that's the YouTube thing. Yeah, Mister Metaker. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's, uh, there you go. And uh, and uh, what was I going to say? Tell you, you told me before uh, before we started the program. How'd you come up with that fucking name? Oh, uh, well, it's based on a site that a guy I know uh, used to run. Uh, basically, somebody was criticized. The the site was dedicated towards making fun of people. Uh, somebody got offended and left a comment, and they tried to say mediocre, but they misspelled it as Medicar, and that's where the name comes from. <laughs> well, well, well done, sir. What what happened to Internet Aristocrat? I like that name, and you ditched it. What the fuck? Gone down in flames. Uh, torched the channel and torched the identity when I basically walked away from Gamergate and just kind of walked away from all that shit and figured, fuck it. It's I, you know, I should state that I've done this before. I've had like three or four different channels in the past that had moderate followings, and I'd reach a point where I just kind of didn't like the attention, or something came up, and I just burned the channel down and go make another one six or seven months later. Well, you've got you got some fucking courage. I mean, there's shit on this channel that I would fucking far prefer to separate myself from, but I'm I'm far too terrified to uh, uh to, to separate myself from the from the tiny following that I have built up. I'm just like, okay, I'll just put this here, and you could all look at my mistakes from the past. Uh, <laughs> and, and I and I and I do that because I am a fame whore, and so uh, I, we do this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from five to seven p.m. Eastern, and I would invite all of you to come back and join us for other episodes of the program, uh, Jim. AKA Mr. Medicare. Uh, I really appreciate you being on the program. Definitely. If, uh, if you're part of my audience and not familiar with Jim, go check out his, uh, his YouTube channel. And, uh, Jim, I'm going to, I'm going to hang up on you and I'll talk to you real soon. Oh, final words. Go ahead. Uh, well, just thanks for having me come on. Uh, it was entertaining. Nice listening to the different guests that came on that didn't, uh, blast you with John Cena music and, <laughs> um, deal. <laughs> That was pretty good, too. Right on, buddy. But uh, I had a good time. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, me too, buddy. It's been a blast. I'm a huge fan, and I really appreciate you joining the program. Uh, yeah, like I said, we do this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern time. And if you're listening on iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube at some other time, and invite you to join us for the live program. As you see, we take calls. You can challenge me. If you think I'm a fucking douchebag, call in and let me know. If you think I'm fantastic, why don't you just go send me some money at ChristopherCantwell.com slash donate. Don't call in and tell me. Just fucking pay me, huh? Just fucking, yeah, yeah, here it is. Fuck you, pay me. Fuck you, pay me. Fuck you, pay me. Fuck you, pay me. ChristopherCantwell.com slash donate. But if you're short on funds, go ahead. Just hit the thumbs up button there on the YouTube. Share this with your friends. Help us reach other people with the program. You might have noticed there's a little bit of talent going on here. We have a lot of fun. So, uh, you know, uh, let's bring other people in on it and uh, enjoy uh, enjoy each other's company and make each other miserable. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we do this Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'll see you uh, I'll see you on Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, tomorrow's the fucking, uh, the fucking primary. I don't know. Just stay tuned. Follow me on Twitter. Vote for Cantwell. ChristopherCantwell.com slash subscribe. I'll do something for primary day. I don't know what the fuck it's going to be. Maybe I'll tweet like crazy. Maybe there'll be some Ustream. But maybe uh, maybe we'll do a show. We'll have a countdown. I don't know. I have no idea what the fuck we're going to do, but it's going to be huge. Huge, as the Donald says. Okay? So we'll see you soon. Fuck you. Bye.